Lions. I'm Chris Brinkley alongside John Hadler and Eddie Suter bringing you this exciting college football matchup on ESPN+. Plus. Let's take a look at the keys to the game brought to you by the Tennessee Highway Safety Office. There's no need to consult the playbook. The winning strategy is to always designate a sober driver because fans don't let fans drive drunk. For the University of Tennessee at March, Skyhawks end those third down struggles. The Skyhawks have truly struggled in the last two weeks on uh, third down conversions. For Lindenwood, win at the line of scrimmage as they play in their first ever Ohio Valley Conference game here against the UT Martin Skyhawks. A couple of really good quarterbacks in this one. The quarterback comparison is presented by Jostens, the official recognition company of the Ohio Valley Conference. John Hattler, let's talk about these two quarterbacks. Well, we're early in the season, but one thing we know already is we have some senior heavy quarterbacks in this league. Cade Brister from Lindenwood, a fifth-year senior, comes in, had 400 yards last week in their win. I uh, was Ohio Valley Conference Offensive Player of the Game. He's number two in the conference in total offense. Right behind him, local product dresser win, trying to break records as well that UT Martin would have had he not had all the injuries in his career. But these are two guys that can flat sling the ball around the yard. It's going to be fun watching them chunk it all over the place today. That's the quarterback comparison brought to you by Justin's Eddie Suter in here with us. Eddie, great atmosphere here at Graham Stadium for those Lindenwood fans and folks all over watching. Uh, there is a, th a threat of a little bit of rain. Cool weather, nice weather right now, but it could rain later tonight. Yeah, I like it. Uh, the last couple of days it cooled off. It, it felt like it was finally football weather. It actually warmed up just a little bit today. Coach's profile as we look at Coach Simpson there, 17th season at the University of Tennessee at Martin with a career record. Uh, 101 and 82, picked up that 100th <laughs> win last year at Missouri State on the road in UT Martin's uh, first or actually second uh, playoff appearance. You talked to Coach Simpson earlier this week. You just talked about how he he hits the veteran years, I guess, of his coaching career. He's a little bit more calm and cool and relaxed. Yeah, he is, and you're going to have that out of both of these coaches uh, as well. We have two veteran coaches who've won a lot of games. Of course, Jed Stuttgart has had three different stops in his career for Lindenwood, continues to rack up the wins. He's won 19 and 45 in his career and has guided them uh, you know, out of the NAI ranks 10 years ago it, through Division Two and now into Division One football. Uh, and, Eddie, this is a big deal for Lindenwood to make that move into the Ohio Valley Conference. Not an easy move, but some, some teams really make that transition more smoothly than others. Well, and yeah, and I didn't know, but John, I think, just pointed out that uh, their coach had guided them already from the NAI up the ranks. So it's, it's kind of cool to have him in that spot, been there, done that kind of thing. Uh, where he is is kind of seasoned and, and knows about those kind of transitions within conferences. Yeah, I'm, I'm a bit excited. They brought uh, several fans that have made the trip, which is not too much of a far. Uh, yeah, no, ride. they were they were out there tailgating. Yeah. It smelled good driving through the parking <laughs> lot. I, I thought about being late for my job tonight and stopping <laughs> seeing if I could pick up some food on the way, but wanted to come hang out with you guys. Looks like we're about set for kickoff. We are Logan Siebert for Lindenwood gets ready to kick it away back deep for UT Martin will be O'Shea Baker and Jordan Castleberry. Siebert has a very good leg. The 5'10", 184-pound sophomore for the Lions gets set. And Lindenwood's first Ohio Valley Conference game has begun. O'Shea Baker comes out across the 10, 15, 20, cuts it back, slips, and falls. And he had a wide open running lane. And UT Martin is going to get excellent field position to start this game. Yeah, if he hadn't slipped and fallen right there, I think he had at least another, what, 15, 20 yards in front of him. Then it was just going to be a foot race to see if anybody could could clip him or take him out. So an excellent return. Ball will be at the 22-yard line for UT Martin. Dresser win, the sixth-year graduate student for UT Martin, local product from right down the road in Dresden, Tennessee, comes out to start this contest with a offensive formation that is Coach Simpson has put in this week. Zach Wallace from Arkansas to his right. Wynn rolls out, hits Devontae Tanksley out across the 30 down to the 32-yard line. So just like that, a Simmons Bank first down on the first play of the game for UT Martin. Yeah, how nice is it for a dresser Wynn to have so many different weapons available to him? He's got two or three receivers he loves to go to, a nice running game behind him. Devontae Tanksley, one of the many deep wide receivers in that room for UT Martin. Dresser win, hands off to Zach Wallace out across the 40. Big fella, 45, 46 yard line. Another Simmons Bank first down. The the Skyhawks seem fired up here in the early going. They're ready to roll. 
or Zach Wallace, 49 carries, 226 yards coming into this contest. Four touchdowns. We have a penalty flag. First start. Offense, number 81. Five-yard penalty. First down. So DJ Nelson guilty of the infraction. And this is something that UT Martin struggled with last week against Boise State. Although UT Martin's first two plays resulted in first downs, Eddie, last week a whole lot of drives started first and 15 on these pre-snap penalties. Yeah, it's uh, obviously a, a bad start or a bad reminder that uh, that was a situation that, that really plagued them last week in Boise State. DJ Nelson, as we mentioned, guilty of that infraction. 6'5", 220-pound red shirt freshman tight end from York, Alabama. Wallace now to Dresser wins right. He's had receivers on the right side. Quick throw to Tanksley again. Busted right in the face by Lloyd Lockett, defensive back out of Plant City, Missouri. Came up and made a great play in the open field. Yeah, Lockett, you could tell he sniffed that play out from the beginning. Wasn't sold on the play fake at all and just a straight line to the, to the receiver. This is a huge game for both of these programs simply from a recruiting standpoint. Dresser win, now checks to the sideline. Zach Wallace to his right. One receiver to the right, two to the left. Ball on the near hash for UT Martin, who is in their gray uniforms. Quick throw out to Wallace, outs to 35, back to the original line of, line of scrimmage to the 40, 45, and run out of bounds just short of midfield. This will bring up a third and seven for UT Martin as the ball will be placed at the minus 49-yard line. Ball on the far hash now. Colton Dowell, a primary receiver. You watch number 15 on the TV. Has moved into the top three all-time in UT Martin reception yardage and touchdowns. Zach Wallace to the left. Dresser win drops back, looking at three routes. Those are to the far boundary. Coming back to it is E.J. Smoot for the first down. Simmons Bank first down, UT Martin. We saw E.J. Smoot in their home opener uh, really keyed in early in that game, a uh, receiver of a couple of touchdown passes. And uh, nice to see that connection here early today. Smoot, three touchdowns on the year, as Eddie pointed out, all coming in the week one win at home against Western Illinois. Win again, throws it out to Colton Dow, makes one move out across the 45, 30, and run out of bounds at the 28-yard line, Simmons Bank, first down. And you talk about connections. I don't know that there is a better connection on this team than, than Colton Dow, Dresser Win. Uh, they, they've, you know, done that so many times this year, and we're going to, looks like we've got an injury there on the sideline, Lyndon Woods. Well, this time out for an injury. So we have an injury. On the field, we will keep it here. We mentioned Colton Dow moved into third place last week. He is now 77 yards away from moving into the second spot all time in, rece in receiving yards at UT Martin. Tra uh, trailing Tarian Stevens was inducted into the UT Martin Hall of Fame two years ago. William McCall sits at number one on that list back in the Gulf South glory days of UT Martin. This is a record that Colton Dow guys could get to it's William McCall, 2,494 yards cool. in his career. So this is something with Dow sitting at 2,072 plus the catch he just made. He could get there. Yeah, and how impressive because I think Dow has uh, dealt with some injuries throughout his career as, as well. So in some limited action sort of. Colton Dow, dresser win. Two seniors on this team that Eddie pointed out have battled some adversity through injuries. Working on graduate degrees, Dresser Wynn already has one. Colton Dow working on his second. Three receivers to the right, two to the left. Wynn drops back, dragging across the middle as Tanksley. It's going to be a gain of three on the play for the Skyhawks. That injured player for Lindenwood was Matt Barnett, who walked away on his own power. He appeared to be okay. And I want to say that was number seven. That was Lockett again making an outstanding open field tackle here for Lindenwood defense. Ball will be placed at the 25-yard line of Lindenwood. UT Martin looking to get on the board on the first offensive drive of the game. 11-15 remaining in this first quarter. John Hattler, Eddie Suter, Chris Brinkley from Hardy Graham Stadium on the beautiful campus of the University of Tennessee at Martin. Wynn drops back, looks left, floats it back to Tanksley. Touchdown, UT Martin. 
25 yards on the pitch and catch. Skyhawks strike early. Dropped it right into his hands as the Skyhawks prove something here early on the replay here on ESPN+. Plus. Look at this perfect pass from Dresser Wynn. Lock it, sucked in a little bit on the play action by UT Martin. Dresser Wynn, the sixth year senior, able to drop it right into his hands as Chris pointed out. On to attempt the extra point is Tyler Larko who assumed kicking duties in week two. Extra point is up and it is good. With 10.59 remaining in the first quarter, UT Martin on top of Lindenwood, seven nothing on the field. The Skyhawks get on the board first. Look at the dresser win pass to Tanksley here on ESPN. Plus UT Martin takes a seven nothing lead. Eddie, a good start for UT Martin. Yeah, it was. And uh, John talked about the play action. Also, Lockett had had a couple of great tackles, so uh, he may be looking to make another big play right there and, and got sucked in a little bit too much and uh, had the play go right over his head. UT Martin kicks it away. A high kick that will come down around the five-yard line. Lyndon Wood shot out of a cannon out to the 20-yard line. At least Spencer Reed with the kick return there. And, Eddie, this is a team. You saw this in college a couple of years ago, and they allowed teams to make the fair catch. Ball automatically moves out to the 25. First year, everybody took that fair catch. Now they're starting to bring them out. Well, and I'm sure you, like I, have, have watched Lindenwood a little bit on the ESPN Plus, and that's Spencer Red. He, he, he likes to run it and lower that head, right. and, and, and he, he seeks contact is, is the way I like to put it. Senior quarterback Cade Brister for Lyndon Wood will bring his pride of Lions out from the sideline to try and match the UT Martin score. Quickly hands off to his running back, Kyra, or excuse me, Andrew Martin. Comes into the season 18, carries 108 yards and two touchdowns. Brister last week, the offensive player of the week for the Ohio Valley Conference. So, Lindenwood ready to run the football. Only two receivers in the formation. Brister throws an out route, finds his number one target in the flats, Peyton Rose, who comes into this game with 10 carries, 217 yards and a touchdown. Six-foot senior from Cumberland, Wisconsin, has been the most sure-handed receiver that Brister's had thus far. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, Kobe Smith may be the guy for them that wants to take the top off here, but uh, without a doubt, uh, his, his number one receiver, as you mentioned it right there, Rose. We'll also see Robert Giamo today at running back for Lindenwood. Giamo on cue, handed the ball, busting through the line of scrimmage for UT Martin. It's Dalen Dotson, huge tackle and tackle for loss by the young man, lost the five on the play. Yeah, it was. His teammates just did a nice job of stringing that out and, and forcing Lindenwood's offensive player towards the sideline, and he just came crashing through, outstanding uh, tackle. That is Dotson's fourth tackle for loss on the season is Brister facing now a two second down with 16 yards to go. Brister in shotgun, floats it out into the flats and not much going there. As once again, Giamo on the reception, but nothing working. It was, I was gonna say, yeah, they're gonna move that marker back a yard. So that'll go down as another negative play as UT Martin pushes them back. Jamo prepped at Bartlett High School in Bartlett, Tennessee. Found his way up to Lindenwood. A short jaunt up from Memphis to St. Louis. A three hour and 45 minute trip from Martin to St. Louis where UT Martin will head next year. Brister in shotgun, drops back, surveys the field, throws it down the middle, picked off. UT Martin at the 30, 25. And a touchdown, UT Martin. O'Shea Baker, 35-yard interception return for UTM. Yeah, well, I'm sure we'll see a replay there, but you just had great pressure. Here's the replay. You had great defensive pressure. Well, he had a few people in his face. Now, Brister just able to step into it, float it over the top. And yeah. Baker just made the nice little move at the five-yard line to tap dance into the end zone. Guys. He had his eyes on the end zone before yeah. he ever caught the football. He knew where he was going. I couldn't tell. Somebody for UT Martin had a tip right there that maybe aided that just a touch. Larco's extra point attempt is up. And Larco's extra point attempt is good. New score, UT Martin 14, 
Lindwood zero, 8.38 remaining in the first quarter of play. Huge start for the Skyhawks to jump out to a 14-0 lead there. And getting the touchdown and the pick six. That is O'Shea Baker's fifth interception of his career. We'll take a timeout. More coming up on ESPN Plus and the Skyhawk Sports Network. Skyhawks come out of the gate with a couple of touchdowns, one from the defense, one from the offense. 838 left in the first quarter with the play-by-play. -play. Here's John Hatler. O'Shea Baker with a 41-yard touchdown on Cade Brister's second interception of the season. As Chris pointed out, brings us to a 14 to nothing lead. UT Martin on top and Lindenwood. So Larco to kick it away with 838 remaining in the first quarter. This is going to be Spencer Reed. Got some on the 10, 15. Great open field tackle by UT Martin. Excellent open field tackle on the play by Ty Woods. Yeah, so let's see how Lyndon Wood will respond uh, to a little bit of adversity here. You, you couldn't ask really for a better opening for UT Martin as they come out in their opening drive, 10 yards per play, march it right down the field, take off four minutes and, uh, and, and get the score, and then turn right back around and not only get the defensive stop but the pick six on Lyndon Wood's first possession. O'Shea Baker really exploded on the scene in his freshman year. A lot of eyes on that young man from Sanford, Florida. Brister leads the Lions back out, trying to get their first points in the OVC conference play. Brister drops back, looks out route, balls batted up, knocked down. UT Martin swatting it away. I believe that was the big Paul of Christian Dow. Yeah, you just see a very aggressive, eager-looking UT Martin defensive unit out there. We talked about in the pregame the keys to the game for Lindenwood is to win the line of scrimmage. That's something you will have to do on the road. Brister rolls to his right, looking deep, throws it out around the 20. Ball is caught by Kobe Smith. Makes one or two Skyhawks miss and gets it out. Good gain for Lindenwood. Will bring up a third and two. Yeah, again, Kobe Smith is their deep threat, but he did a nice job of coming back and helping his quarterback make a play as he saw him under duress. UT Martin had a nice little rush on. Smith coming into this game, 11 catches, 157 yards, two touchdowns. Senior from Compton, California, with his first catch of the conference season. Brister checks to the sideline, twins right, twins left, ball on the far hash. UT Martin crowd makes a little bit of noise as Brister drops back, looks down the seam, dumps it off to his running back who gets out across the 30, 35, and just short of the 40-yard line as Giamo hauls it in and gets the first first, first down for Lindenwood. Yeah, good work there by Brister, even with the pressure, just remained calm and got enough for the first down. Brister set the record last week for most touchdowns by an individual in the history of Lindenwood football. And he gets his first down for the Lions, our first one in the history of the Ohio Valley Conference play. Play action pass, Brister throws it, almost picked off once again. Ball just thrown a little bit behind the intended receiver, Peyton Rose. Yeah, it looked like that ball uh, was almost ticketed. Tyler Gore had a beat on it, but uh, still trying to make a play on the receiver there before he realized it was almost in his hip. Tyler Gore has slowly worked his way on the field for UT Martin. Sophomore getting more and more reps. Played very well against Boise State last week. 7.09 remaining in the first quarter of play in the Ohio Valley contest. Trips to the left for Brister. Brister drops back, throws across the seam, hits the tight end, caught the 45. 50 to the 45 of UT Martin before being wrestled down the big tight end. Four, Hauling in the catch, Spencer Reed. Seven First carries, down. 72 yards. Chris, you talked about that aggressive defense. Sometimes that over-aggressiveness, though, will uh, allow the offense to take advantage, as Lyndon Wood does right there and picks up a big first down. Yeah, we're seeing the Lions kind of settle in here. I was actually Chase LaCrease. I apologize to he and his family on his catch as he was able to haul it in and pick up the second first down of the game for Lyndon Wood. Brister fakes a handoff, tries to find something going. Now he's going to use his feet. 
Out across the 40, 35, 30, trying to eat the outside, 20. Pushed out of bounds at the 15 by O'Shea Brister Baker. But you see right there, Brister. wide away, Brister able to lead this team and keep this offense on the field. He does. He saw all the defensive backs pretty much turn their back on him, head that direction, knew he really just needed to get past that initial defensive line, that defensive front. He did a nice job of that. And UT Martin having some problems uh, in the open field with tackles. A few missed tackles already here in the first quarter. A lot of receivers running off the line of scrimmage and down the field gave Brister the opportunity to use his legs. An undervalued Porsche part of his game is now the Lions are in the red zone. Brister drops back, looks to the left, getting pressure once again, dumps it off underneath and just slips one tackle and another. Giamo being slippery, but not before a gain of eight on the play. You can see Giamo receive a couple out of the backfield right now. I knew once they got inside the 20, they might well, try to force feed him a little bit. You talked about trying to establish something with that line. Nice little dump off in the middle of the, the middle of that UT Martin zone. You're right about that with Brister running too, John. I mean, he really ran that ball with purpose going <laughs> laterally. His goal was to get to the end zone, not just get the first down. Giamo, 5'8", 185, is a stout young man. Brister surveys the field, hands off to Giamo, spin move in the interior of the line, brought down, but that should be a first down for Lindenwood. Tough running by Giamo in between Giamo the tackles. In the so now the first downs are even at five apiece as Lindenwood really has settled in here at Graham Stadium. And Eddie, you pointed it out. How would they respond after that pick six? I would say pretty well. They did. Uh, and, again, I think UT Martin had an opportunity to just kind of make them, I don't know, dink and dunk it in the middle, but tried to go for that big play again. And really that's what allowed Lindenwood to get to midfield. But they've been on a nice little drive ever since. Kobe Smith into the boundary for Lindenwood. Brister looking his way back, shoulder throw. Throw is up and no good. Really nice throw, great adjustment by Smith as the ball was in the air, just unable to haul it in. Yeah, nice play, nice throw really by the quarterback. Uh, just a touch offline, maybe couldn't get his feet or, or get his shoulders, I guess, squared to that play. Now second and goal from the five for the Lions. Giamo still in it running back. Smith to the left. Rose to the right. Giamo rolls, tries to find Smith, dumps it off underneath. Touchdown, Lindenwood. Darren Fugit, the 6'3", 228-pound freshman from Bolivar, Missouri, answers the score for UT Martin. Well, a long drive, I think 10 plays, over 80 yards to march down the field. And part of it with Brister running the football, throwing the football. Nice job by Lindenwood to recover. On to attempt the extra point will be Logan Siebert. And he stays true on the year with this extra point attempts. So it's 14 to 7. The Skyhawk lead cut to 7. We'll take a break and come back with more. Four minutes, 12 seconds remaining in the first quarter on ESPN Plus and the Skyhawk Sports Network. Lindenwood gets on the board. Let's watch the touchdown again here on ESPN Plus right into the end zone and a big one to make it 14 to 7. The Skyhawks leading the Lions. Darren Fugit. It's his first catch of the year. Yeah, first catch of the year and a good one to start it off. Saber gets ready to kick it away for Lindenwood. O'Shea Baker, Jordan Castleberry back for UT Martin. Siebert boots it away, low kick. It's going to bounce up, and O'Shea Baker's going to take it. Out across the 20, 25, 30, met and dropped on the play by Man Magruder. Man Magruder. It's a great name. I dig that name, every bit of that. Absolutely. If it was Man Magruder would be the only thing that would make it better. <laughs> so UT Martin, after scoring on their opening possession of the game, and then a pick six, on Lindenwood's first, Lindenwood turns right around and answers as Cade Brister hit Darren Fugit on that five-yard touchdown pass, and UT Martin back on the field. That last touchdown drive for Lindenwood, 10 plays, 83 yards, took four minutes and 21 seconds off of the clock. 
Wynn drops back, screen gets set up. Tanksley made a heck of a catch, but that's going to be a negative play for UT Martin. But quite frankly, if Tanksley doesn't pull that in, that's a pick six yeah. for Lindenwood. Linden Wood. And sitting out there was Wesley Hines, and he'd have been able to take it to the house. Yeah, you talked about it. We're still in the first quarter, and it, it seems like forever ago since UT Martin had the ball in their hands. Uh, they opened up again that game with that four-minute drive, but Lindenwood doing a really nice job of just taking time off the clock and, and letting UT Martin's offense kind of sit over there and think about things. Three and a half minutes left to play in the first quarter. Zach Wallace in it running back for UT Martin. Sits to dresser wins left. Ball is in the middle of the field. Win handoff to Wallace, gets out across the 25-yard line before he is wrapped up and brought down by Dylan, by, I'm sorry, Dylan Petty. Nine tackles, one fumble recovery this year. The senior transfer from Sacramento State, prepped in Riverside, California. Second carry for Wallace on the day. Nine tackles in two games at the defensive line position. It's pretty efficient for Lindenwood. Coach Jed Stuttgart trying to get his team going. Did on the last offensive drive. Trying to do the same defensively. Wynn looks right, throws it across the middle, finds Tanksley in and out of his hands. UT Martin will have to punt it away. Yeah, he's about to get sandwiched there. Just couldn't hold on to the football. He did. He found a, a nice spot, a nice soft spot in the middle of that zone. You, you saw four Lindenwood defenders surrounding him, but it would have been good enough for a first down. Here's a replay on ESPN+. Plus. Yeah, had it in the hands. Spencer Red back. I think I've been calling him Reed. I don't want his mom and dad upset. I apologize. He didn't hear you. <laughs> Spencer didn't hear you. Spencer Red he back. He may hear it tonight. That's right. Go watch the game. As Larco gets ready to punt it away. And UT Martin's going to burn a timeout. All right, what's the situation there? Not enough guys? It appears to be so. Yeah, ten, ten, only 10 players on the field right there. So another miscue by UT Martin. Pre-snap penalties were a huge issue last week. You just can't have that happen if you're UT Martin only sending out 10 on a punt unit and have to burn a timeout. Well, you don't want to make excuses anywhere. Uh, but you talked about the noise there in Boise. I mean, obviously that might have been part of the problem here, but certainly not the case. We can't use that uh, as any kind of excuse for UT Martin here tonight though in front of their home crowd. So timeout burnt, the first of the half for UT Martin. Red back deep for Lindenwood. Larco set to kick it away, averaged 45 yards per punt last week in Boise, Idaho. Punt drives Red to the left towards the sideline. UT Martin, great coverage. Red fields it, runs backward, tackled quickly. A lot of uh, a lot of confidence right there to pull that one in. As you had O'Shea Baker dialing in on him, then Aaron Webb wrapped him up for the tackle. Yeah, you call that confidence? <laughs> yeah, I guess. Uh, <laughs> confidence is your ability to avoid one, but uh, maybe <laughs> – Maybe make an open field play somewhere there. I mean, that was impressive because Baker went blowing right past Red on the punt. Stood right in there, safely secured it. Linden Woods going to start their third drive of this ball game on the 30-yard line. Senior quarterback Cade Brister standing on the 25. Drops back, looks right, left, floats it out. Almost picked off, but a great catch to go up and high Peyton Rose. Ballerina down the sideline for a first down. He did look like a ballerina. Good footwork there as he landed softly. You know, John, you mentioned Brister's ability to run the ball. He had that carry for 26 yards earlier. I was looking back at his high school career. Now, this was goes all the way back to 2016. In high school, he threw for 2,600 yards but ran for 4,000. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> yeah, now he also had 396 tackles on defense and intercepted the football 22 times. So he did a lot for his high school team. But one of his attributes, was running the football. Uh, dude plays hard as he hands it off 
to his running back, Giamo, and that's one of the characteristics that has constantly popped up about Brister's, his toughness, mm -hmm. his awareness on the field, and his ability to make quick decisions. And we've seen him get through his progressions relatively quickly. You know, had that one pass, you know, picked off on that first drive, but that second drive methodically moved his team down the field. Yeah, he settled down. He's definitely a gamer. On those touchdowns in high school, now then this is going back to his prep career, he ran for 84 and threw for 20. So he was on a team that ran the football and was very comfortable with it in his hands. Ball on the far hash, wide open down the field, and Brister missed his target on the outstretched fingertips of Peyton Rose. Blown coverage by UT Martin, almost another touchdown by the Lions. That yeah, was, again, a little, a little misdirection right there. Number 17, Peyton Rose found himself streaking down the middle of the field, but the timing was just a little bit off. Minute seven remaining in the first quarter. UT Martin on top of Lindenwood, 14 to seven. Three wide receivers in the formation. Ball on the right hash. Brister puts Smith in motion. Brister drops back, being flushed out of the pocket. Rush from behind, dumps it off. Once again, to Giamo, who gets another first down, but he is hurt. Brister's pass is complete. Yeah, UT Martin defender over there laying. Next to him, too. I can't see. He's, he's rolled over on his back right there. Official timeout. Point injury. Yeah, they're both down on the far That's side the here of our broadcast on the Lindenwood side of Graham Stadium. I didn't really see anybody get tangled up. I didn't either, as you see the well, training staff coming over. Giamo and, and the, the UT Martin defender who is down on the ground collided right around the 42 and they both stayed down quickly giamo has taken his helmet off yeah you knew he was hurt immediately by the reaction hopefully it's nothing serious and he can get back in this game both players have taken their helmets off to try and collect their yeah if giamo were were to miss any time here of course he is lindenwood's main ground attack you were you were talking about Brister, I mean, he's actually the third leading rusher on this team. We haven't seen any design runs for him yet tonight. Uh, most of his has been scrambled, scramble drill activity. It's like UT Martin's player is he's up and on his up way. Yeah. See Andrew him. Martin will Got more it. than likely be the one that comes in to praise Giamo. That's Rob Hicks. That's a loss that UT Martin does not lead as Hicks is the leading tackler in the Ohio Valley Conference, followed closely by his teammate John Ford, who's been banged up mm -hmm. since fall camp with the shoulder injury. So linebackers for UT Martin, although very, very good, are very, very banged up. Giamo is up as well for Lindenwood. He is gingerly walking and barely trying to put any pressure on his right foot. Yeah, that doesn't look good for Lindenwood at all. Tough break. Already four catches and uh, four carries. And he's really been the safety valve for Brister. The UT Martin defensive backs have done a nice job of covering up the receivers of Lindenwood. Again, credit Brister for dumping that down and finding his wide open running back that's been slipping out of the backfield. So coming in for Lindenwood, will be Andrew Martin. He has 18 carries for 108 yards, two touchdowns on the season. Brister uncorks one down the left sideline, trying to find Smith, but throws it too far out of bounds. Excellent pressure by UT Martin on that play. Yeah, and I think he's telling his, his receiver maybe he would like to have seen him come back on that play, but yeah, there was a lot of pressure there, just uh, doing a nice job of getting rid of that one. Well, what a, a smart play by the senior quarterback in Brister, knowing it's not there, instead of trying to drop it in between two defenders for UT Martin, wisely chunks it out of bounds. That'll make it second down and 10 with 43 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. Lindenwood with the ball on the UT Martin 45. Brister looking, trying to dump it down again. Back shoulder throw, and what a catch. But they're going to say incomplete. That was an excellent throw by Brister where only Rose could, or excuse me, Smith could catch the ball. But Smith's posterior end was in the white by the time he caught it. Incomplete pass. Yeah, he was over there asking the official, but, uh, yeah, the official pointing down at the, the white sideline. 
All right, let's hear that grind noise meter. Let's make some noise, guys. So 36 down. seconds now remaining in the first quarter. This is third and 10, third down conversions, two for three, Lindenwood. So Brister checks to the sideline, ball on the right hash. Moves Martin to his left. Four wide receivers in the formation for Lindenwood. Over the middle, high snap, catch, excellent throw, first down, Lindenwood, Peyton Rose on the ground. Yeah, on third and 10. Well, John, you'd like to sit a little bit tighter coverage on that maybe? Uh, he gave up a lot of cushion there, but again, a lot of that is on Rose and an excellent route that he ran, stuck his foot into the outside, defeating UT Martin's leverage, came back over the middle, and Brister throws a strike. And that's going to do it at the end of the first quarter. Both of these teams opening contest in the Ohio Valley. UT Martin 14, Lindenwood 7 on the Skyhawk Sports Network and ESPN+. Plus. One quarter in the books, UT Martin leading Lindenwood 14-7. Despite that lead, statistically, John, Lindenwood leading this game in most categories. Yeah, every single one of them. Lindenwood's already racked up 109 yards of total offense. Or, excuse me, 134 yards total offense to UT Martin's 84. Hand off to Martin, bottled up, scrapes to the outside, gets across the 20-25. Down to the 15 and knocked out of bounds. So, Andrew Martin, Martin checking two. in for a bar, a Robert G. <laughs> Goodness, boys, I'm struggling. <laughs> Giamo, Robert Giamo, who left with an injury earlier, and they, they have not missed a beat nope. offensively. That's right. So, first and goal for Lindenwood. Ball is on the nine-yard line of UT Martin. And they've really taken the Skyhawk crowd out of the game. Brister trying to tie this contest up. Ball is on the far hash. Moves Martin to his left. Smith in the slot. Brister's going to run it himself. Gets out across the tee and picks up two on the play. In on the tackle for Make, UT Martin's John Ford. Ford. Makes sense, Go right, with Giamo out. out. Call his own name right there if they're trying to. We'll get that rush inside the red zone. I mean, Martin with two touchdowns on the ground this season. The junior from Holden, Missouri. In the game, as we mentioned, Giamo out with an apparent right leg injury. Second and goal for the Lions. Brister back, slides up in the pocket, throws it behind Smith. Smith was wide open. He was, just threw it behind him, like you said. It, uh, Looked like it was going to be an easy walk-in touchdown right there if you just hit him in the numbers or even got or, or lead him just a little bit right there, but pass thrown behind the receiver. Brister's had two throws today that could have ended up touchdowns for Lindenwood. Now third down and goal from the eight-yard line. Three for four on third down conversions for the Lions. UT Martin with those three down linemen showing pressure to Brister's left. Man coming through, Brister drops back, trying to find something. He's hemmed up, still working. Receivers are working. UT Martin's working. Brister keeps going backwards in the wrong direction. And UT Martin with the sack. John Ford with his lead leading fifth sack of the season. BB's Furniture and Mattress and Gallery sack and a loss of a bunch on the play. Boy, Brister did everything he could do to slip out of that. You watch here on the replay. Goes back to his right, back pedals, just nowhere to go. And the Skyhawks close it out. 16-yard loss will force a field goal attempt of 40 yards for Lindenwood. Kick is up. Kick is through. And kick is good. Siebert hits his longest field goal of the year to make it 14 to 10. UT Martin on top of Lindenwood. 12:48 remaining in the second quarter. And a timeout is taken. We'll take one with the teams here on the Skyhawk Sports Network and ESPN Plus. Skyhawks leading Lindenwood 14 to 10. Let's take a look at the series history between these two schools presented by Delta Dental. Unleash your smile power with Delta Dental. The cool thing is 
is that uh, we are making history here. The two teams did meet August 20th, 2003. Oh, and that's not right. Series history, there is no history. I can history. tell you the history. Yeah, yeah. We're making one, history. We are making this is, yeah, this is it. Right We're here. making it in front of our eyes. And actually, it's been solid because uh, the Skyhawks jump out with the 14 points, then Lindenwood comes back to score and then kicks the field goal to make it 14-10. to 10. They've really turned this game around after that pick six. Siebert kicks it off. Fair catch coming by O'Shea Baker. And, man, that's a tough one if you're Baker there. Let that ball go out of bounds. But he did do the correct call, made the, made the fair catch. It's going to come out to the 25. And, hey, it's getting chippy down there. Yeah. Lindenwood, as you said, kind of got the mojo going yeah. on right now and uh, kind of uh, had an opportunity to go and score that touchdown to tie it up. Excellent job by the UT Martin defense. Siebert kicks that ball through the uprights after an 8 or 16-yard loss by Brister on the scramble for a 40-yard field goal. That it. Yeah, I mean, and if the question is how will Lindenwood make that transition to this level and can they compete in the OVC, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> They've answered the question pretty quickly. I mean, 17 minutes into the game, I don't think there's much of a question about that. UT Martin. A little toss sweep to the outside to Zach Wallace. Gets it out across the 30. Going to be a gain of five, possibly six on the play for UT Martin. That's one thing that Coach Jason Simpson in the weekly meetings talked about, the inability last week and even the prior week against Missouri State to get that all-important five-yard watermark on first down. UT Martin picks up six on that play. Wallace to dresser wins left. Ball on the right hash. Wind claps, facing four-man pressure up front. Hands it off to Wallace, who gets out to the outside, across the 35, a 40, 45, crosses midfield before being run out of bounds by Lyndon Wood. In pursuit for the Lions, Kai Ross, 10 tackles on the season, saved a touchdown for his team. Yeah, and you, you pretty much had to know that was going to be the game plan coming out here on this next drive, get Zach Wallace going. Only two rushes up until uh, – you know, before this drive, 18 yards. And a lot of the reasons why uh, UT Martin's time of possession had been so low. Colton Dow only one catch. Zach Wallace feed the beast after that Sibbins Bank first down. Wallace gets it again, picks up two. Stop on, uh, or a stop by Lyndon Woods defensive back Ross right there. As he came up and made the play in the hole. So Ross, two consecutive tackles. Second and eight now for UT Martin on the Lindenwood side of the field. Checking into the contest for UT Martin is Austin Bray, 6'6", tight end. Freshman out of Venice, Florida, will move to the slot. Twins right, twins left, ball middle of the field. Dresser wins, surveys the Lindenwood defense. Pressure shifts to the right side. Win looks to the right, comes back, finds... Tanksley once again dumps it off, but nothing going for UT Martin. Maybe a gain of one on the play. They will give us, give Tanksley two. I think that's Tanksley's sixth catch of the night already. Only nine completions tonight and six of them to him. So Tanksley, or Tanksley and the Skyhawks facing another third down. Lindenwood showing a blitz win changing his protection. Skyhawks one for two on third down conversions. Skyhawks only three of 21 over the previous two games. As pressure coming up ended, win lofts it down the side to his receiver and nothing there. So once again, UT Martin has a decision to make on third down. And we know that Dresser win can punt the football as EJ Smoot was the intended target as Wallace checks in. So Jason Simpson He's going to roll the dice here with 10-14 left in the second quarter. UT Martin facing a fourth and seven. Interesting, right? Like usually you think if you're going to go for it on fourth down, you don't go for that home run ball. UT Martin, somebody's taking a timeout here. Yeah, yeah Lindenwood is taking a timeout. And we're going to take one. Start timeout. Lindenwood, fair first. Timeout. 14-10, our score, 10 minutes, 14 seconds remaining. First half, Graham Stadium, Martin, Tennessee. John Hatler with the play-by-play. Dresser win, an all-conference punter, or OVC punter of the week, two seasons ago. 
coming back off that shoulder injury. We know he can back it up and pooch it if need be, and that's what's going to happen. So back deep to receive the punt for Lindenwood will be Darian Bolden. And Dresser does not hit it well at all. However, it gets a UT Martin roll. We'll roll down inside the 20, down to the 15-yard line. Looked like that was going to be about a 10 or 15-yard punt, but it did. It took a nice UT Martin roll. You know, one aspect of this, and Coach Simpson talks about it, seeing a team you've not seen much, the Lindenwood doesn't know a lot about UT Martin other than the games they've seen this season and vice versa just because of Lindenwood moving into the Ohio Valley Conference's first meeting between the two teams. So that was a smart timeout. And, you know, they obviously knew what was going to happen but needed to be prepared for it. Well, and this coaching staff for Lindenwood, of course, Denver Johnson used to be the head coach at Murray State. Yeah. He's an offensive line coach now in his third season with Lindenwood. And then Anthony Jones was a wide receiver at Jacksonville State, so they are not unfamiliar with the Ohio Valley Conference. As Brister rolls to the right, finds Smith for a very minimal game. So OVC is not a foreign concept to Lindenwood. Right. But there's a lot of transition to, you know, how things are done, where you go, where's the locker room, where's the stadium, where do you park the buses. It's, I mean, just the little things that you don't really think of that shouldn't affect the football game potentially can. Martin still in at running back for Lindenwood. Of course, Denver Johnson married a local Greenfield product. He's back home this evening. Talked to his brother-in-law, Derek Powell, earlier today. His ball's handed off to Martin, wrapped up quickly by a bunch of UT Martin gray jerseys. Sean Lewis leading the way. Martin Transfer Lewis from the University of Houston. Of the two interceptions, first Ran game of the year against Western Illinois. You know, one of the toughest things when you go to a place for the first time is is where do you order the post-game meal? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to some of the Lindenwood coaches today. They made the drive down today to not spend the night. And that's so. another, yeah, making the decision. Where do you want to stay in a hotel? How close will the hotel be to the stadium? Smith to the right on the 20-yard line, now in motion. Snap to Brister. Smith dragging across as a primary read. Brister tucks it, runs, hit by one Skyhawk, finally wrestled down. I believe that is by Dotson, and it was, but not before another Another first down. down. Yep, now on third down conversions, four of six. Lindenwood with double-digit first downs as their tenth of the game. Carson Evans checks in for UT Martin. Andrew Martin still in at running back. Robert Giamo, right leg injury earlier in the game when he collided with Rob Hicks on the sideline. TJ Neal, three tackles for loss, threatening to blitz, and here he comes up the middle. And a BB Furniture Mattress Gallery sack by UT Martin. Devin Sims from the safety position comes up and lays the hit to Brister. Loss of seven on the play. Yeah, we talk about those linebackers a lot for UT Martin, rightfully so. They've uh, had an outstanding season up to this point, but Sims uh, with a great career himself. He's third on the team in, in tackles for the season, but uh, actually leads this team career-wise. Devin Sims, a preseason All-Ohio Valley Conference selection. Excellent season last year. 213 total tackles in his career. Sim flips it out. Reception made at the 26, out to the 30. It's, again, that primary target for Brister. Peyton Rose catches his fourth ball of the game. All right, UT Martin's been in this situation uh, many, many times here already tonight. Uh, they've had some problems with some broken tackles. They've also lost uh, Cade Brister a few times as he scrambled, so see if they can clean those up and get Lindenwood off the field here. Lindenwood four of six, but that's going to be a free play as UT Martin jumped off sides. Jump ball up, down, nothing, but a free play as Dotson jumped off sides. For UT Martin. Certainly not going to help the defense. Allen Brister smartly takes the shot down the field again, trying to oh, find wow. Rose. Number 10, five yard penalty, third down. So obviously going to make this a much more manageable 
Third and one should be. Going from a third and six to a third and one, as Eddie had pointed out. Here's a replay, and you see him jump off sides yeah. there. It's pretty clear. So just a situation down, where, down, again, down, those pre-snap penalties have been an Achilles heel for UT Martin. So third and one now for the Lions. Brister checks to the sideline. Twins to the right. Smith all by his lonesome, manned up on the left side. Martin in at running back for Lindenwood. UT Martin showing blitz. Six on the way. Brister tucks it, runs, tackled, but it's going to be a first down for Lindenwood. Excellent job on the blitz, but the senior yeah. finding a way to wiggle his way through. Keon Willis with the tackle, the Missouri transfer for UT Martin, but another first down by the Lions. Yeah, Brister's a big guy now, six feet tall, 222 pounds. He just wanted to get, get to first down, and that's what he did. Yeah, and that was his sixth rushing attempt. But, again, just the first designed run right there, and uh, just a, a nice little scheme, nice plan. Six minutes remaining in the first half. UT Martin leads 14-10 over Lindenwood. This Brister, quick pass, and, again, intended for the wide receiver, Peyton Rose, but falls incomplete. John Hatler, Eddie Suter, Chris Brinkley. Here at Hardy Graham Stadium on the campus of the University of Tennessee at Martin. It's these two teams facing each other for the first time. It's 10 short years ago, Lindenwood played football in the NAIA ranks. After some time in D2, has now joined Division I FCS level. That's, that's really a, a short amount of time for a lot of transition right there. Brister. Back, looks to the outside, nothing there. Great pressure, Brister off again and running. Flag comes flying in. That's going to be a rotator cuff surgery right there. <laughs> that was a heck of a throw. Down in distance, and he took care of it. You got uh, Jalen yeah, Bethany. Yeah. Jalen Bethany's helmet yeah. came flying off. I would bet this is going to be a hands to the face of yeah. some sort by UT Martin. Personal foul. Face mask, defense, number five, 15-yard penalty, first down. So, Sean Lewis guilty of the infraction. That is the third penalty of the game for UT Martin, totaling 35 yards. A very disciplined Lindenwood team. None. Zero. That's exactly right. None. So, this will flip the field. For Coach Stuttgart and the Lions. I don't know. This is not where I thought we'd be here in the second quarter. It looked like UT Martin was just going to run away with this game. Marched right down the field on their opening possession. Had a takeaway. Pick six on the uh, first Lindenwood possession. But like you said, Lindenwood playing uh, very poised. We talked about it. Both of these teams very senior laden. A lot of experience on both sides of the line. Brister hands off to Martin. Martin wrapped up at the line of scrimmage. May get one. On the play, we'll see where it's spotted. But you really have to. Coach Stuttgart, knowing this move is coming, stayed true to his recruiting philosophy and stayed with the high school junior college transfers. Now, in time, we probably will see that change. But these are a bunch of young men that were brought in by this coaching staff. Stuttgart is now in his sixth season with Lindenwood. Second and nine. Ball is on the 43. Brister drops back, trying to find something. Floats it down the middle of the field, tangled up. Two players, and down comes Rose with it. Excellent coverage on the play by Brackett, but Rose got position, went high, first down in the red zone for the Lions. Wow, again, impressive. Clock now under five minutes. I mean, if, if you didn't know the score of this game and you had watched going back to, I guess, the eight-minute mark maybe of the first quarter, you would think that Lindenwood had the lead. And they've got a chance to take it here. Yeah, and I hate to say it, but uh, you, you look back at UT Martin's performance last week, and it's, it's really been the deficiencies of the offense tonight. So, Brister trying to punch this in. Hands off to Martin, who shoots up the middle. Gain of five on the play, on the tackle. For UT Martin, Ty Woods. Yeah, you got to think what UT, or not UT Martin, but Lindenwood, content to let some clock run right here. 
Try to take this thing down as much as possible. Now, Linden Wood, punch it in. Linden Wood has the luxury of getting the ball in the second half right. to open this, open it up. A score here, keep UT Martin out of the end zone, and then another score on your opening drive in the second half. Could be the difference. Brister under center, which is unusual. Smith in motion, play action, dumps it to the out, outside once again. The big tight end who caught the touchdown pass earlier, Darren Fugit. Hauls it in around the five, stumbles down at the four. Yeah, trying to kind of make that spin move to get to the end zone and just didn't have his feet under him after he caught the football. You know, and not only did Lindenwood get down early and throw the pick six, guys, Giamo got hurt, and that was not in the game plan. But Martin has come in and done well, and the team uh, did not panic. So now third and three. Lindenwood can still get a first down without scoring. Smith all by himself, option coming, snuffed out by UT Martin. Excellent job by Christian Dow to scrape down the line of Martin scrimmage. Here. Wrap up Martin. It's going to bring Martin fourth down, and the field goal unit actually sprinted onto fourth, the man. field. They did. You see him walking right back. Off, though, don't uh -huh. you? <laughs> you stop like, what? You're calling us back? But he may be, uh, they may just be taking this thing down too. Let as much time run off and then probably take a timeout here at the end and, and let them make a decision during that timeout. Fuller Partners Real Estate play clock is down to 15 seconds. 2.27 left on the game clock as it continues to run. Eddie, I think you're right. Yeah, UT Martin, I wondered if they might take a timeout just to preserve some of that clock, but both teams are going to be content. And UT Martin may be sitting there thinking, nah, you know, Lyndon Wood, we, we, we kind of hope you do go for it right here, get a big stop. And, See if they can't march this thing down, get their two-minute offense on the field. Out. Coach Stuttgart's going to talk about it. 14-10, UT Time Martin out. on top of Lindenwood. We come back, we'll see what the decision's made on Skyhawk Sports Network and ESPN+. Plus. What a game. Two minutes, 14 seconds remaining. There you see the Skyhawk cheerleaders here in the first half with 2.14 left in the second quarter. 14-10, Skyhawks have the lead. Fourth down and three. What are they going to do, John? They're going to go for it. Brister out to bring the troops to the line of scrimmage, fourth and three. Looking to take the lead, basically. Lindenwood can get a first down without scoring. Martin right behind him. Brister with the hard count. Moves Martin to his right. Smith manned up to the boundary. UT Martin almost jumps off sides, nothing there. Trying to get them to jump. I, I thought I wouldn't about be this, surprised if they take a penalty here to back it up for the field goal. Well, I looked at the down and distance, and I thought, well, even if you get them to jump, you're still not you're still not getting a first down on that. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. So UT Martin. So that's not going to get football. you a first down. So what's that? We get well, a first down. My question, down. huh? That gets you a first down. Five yard penalty right there was. Yeah, the but you're not going to go five yards. You're going to go well, like half the distance situation, right? Well, they should still. I think they give you. That first down. I just but thought what, maybe they're trying to inch it that much closer, and then maybe you do make that decision to go to, for it if you can get it within one yard. That's an awfully difficult field goal attempt for Siebert is why they take the delay a game. Back it up. Ball will be spotted on the 16 for 26-yard attempt. Siebert's kick is up. Looks good. Is good. New score. Skyhawks 14. Lindenwood 13. 2-10 remaining in the first half of play. Timeout on the field. We will take one as well. 14-13 your score. Skyhawks will get the ball back with 2-10 to go. Skyhawks Sports Network and ESPN Plus. Two minutes, 10 seconds remaining. First half, the Skyhawks leading Lindenwood here. 14-13. Time, though, for UT Martin to possibly extend the lead with the play-by-play. -play. Here's John Hatler. Castleberry and Baker back deep for the Skyhawks. After Siebert with a 26-yard field goal, that drive spanning 14 plays, 76 yards, and seven minutes and 51 seconds off the clock. When Lindenwood has the ball, wow. they're eating up clock. Yeah, I've got some stats for you after this. Baker, fair catch in the end zone, will come out to the 25. So check this out. Time of possession, Lindenwood, 19 minutes, 16 seconds, compared to UT Martin's 834, more than doubling him up. More impressive, Lindenwood with 199 total yards compared to UT Martin's 117. 
how do the Skyhawks have the lead? It's on the pick six, basically. I mean, offensively, the Skyhawks yeah. are getting beat 13-7. to seven. Yes. Uh, yeah. just, that's just how it is. And, uh, again, you a lot of credit goes to Coach Stuttgart and this staff and these players for Lindenwood to come into this environment and have the ability to move the ball offensively. UT Martin's going to have to play fast if they want to score. Wynn's going to get sacked. He's trying to get out of there. He pulls a Houdini and just slings it out of bounds. What a play by the sixth-year graduate student of UT Martin. He was dead in the right at around the 10-yard line. And how he got out, I have no idea. Yeah, I thought he was tackled. Oh, yeah. He, he, he looked like he was done there. It looked like it was going to be an eight-yard loss. Uh, they were just going to try to run clock out. But, uh, yeah. They'll, uh, they'll live to, to fight another fight here. Bray checks in for UT Martin. Nelson comes out. UT Martin is at their best when they play with tempo. With two minutes and two seconds remaining, 75 yards in front of them, that will have to be the case here. Dresser's 9 of 11 throwing the football, so he's been efficient in his percentages. Two men going in motion at the same time. Going to be another penalty Ouch. against UT Martin. Miscommunication. Looks like it's Smoot and Tanksley. That's four both penalties. No yeah. yeah, there was no foul on the play as both of them were trying to get reset. Play clock at 25, 202 on the big boy clock. Yeah, they want to go with tempo, but here's the thing. You uh, you go three and out right here, and you give the ball right back to, to Lindenwood, and, and if you can't get a first down or two right here with good field position. The most important thing, too, Eddie, is to keep this clock running and no incompletions. Wynn pulls it, gets out across the 25, 30, 35, ah, 40. I thought he was gone if he had broke one more. I'll be honest with you. He, uh, it's good good, uh, good ball handling skills right there because I thought, uh, I thought the ball was not in his hands. Simmons yeah. Bank first down, looking like the 2015 and 2016 version of Dresser Wynn who prepped at Dresden High School just down the road, who most oftentimes one of the fastest players on the field. Wynn drops back, surveys, throws out to the field side, caught by Dow at midfield. Dow's out of bounds, so that will stop the clock. Another Simmons Bank first down for UT Martin. 139 left in the half. I was going to say, if they can just get this ball to midfield, then you can really uh, open up that offensive playbook, be a lot more aggressive, take some shots, uh, because you've pretty much flipped the field position no matter what happens here. Dresser Wynn suffered a season-ending shoulder injury. His Second year, sophomore season, rehabbed, was unable to get back in time to earn his spot back, then snapped his ankle, playing quarterback against Austin P. He's had a rough year. Drops back, dumps it off to Wallace, 50, 45, and drags a Lindenwood defender with him down to the 42-yard line. And as he maintained that forward progress, he was able to get out of bounds, so a good job. Tyrone Griffin clock. holding on for dear life. It's the clock now at 133, and it is stopped. 14-13. UT Martin scored 14 points. Lindenwood turned right back around and scored 13. UT Martin trying to answer Lindenwood before halftime. Tanksley in motion. Win back. Throws it across the middle. Tipped in the middle by linebacker David Whitmore. 6'1", 225 freshman out of Indianapolis. He was just hanging back, mm -hmm. just set back in that little zone and watching Dresser win, spying him and batted it down. Yeah, and it's odd. It, it feels like we're well beyond the second quarter because we've had a, a game's worth of entertainment and not used to playing these night games this season at least. And uh, with a 90 seconds remaining, we're still in the second quarter. Lyndon Wood. Not allowing anything deep. Safety is 25 yards off of the line of scrimmage. Wynn looks out, dumps across the middle. That to Colton Dow. Out to the 35. 30 makes a move. Tries to get out of bounds. He does. Clock stops. Simmons Bank first down. Yeah, but with this much clock, Chris, you know, you talk, or I don't know, John, whoever pointed out that they're not allowing anything deep. Uh, it's plenty of time to just continue to dump it right there over the middle and just chew up yardage. Colton with his third catch, and Skyhawks in field goal range. Ball spotted at the 28-yard line. Kai Ross, the safety, hanging way back there. Dumps it off to Tanksley out across the 15-10. 
into the five. First down, UT Martin, first and goal from the four. Did you see him stop on a dime and change directions? He stopped on a dime and made change. He got going. That was impressive. Coach Simpson, there's a penalty flag. And all uh, that for naught. 77, 10 yard penalty, first down. Uh, that's tough. So Lamar Morgan, who has battled injuries all season long, whistled for the hold. And that is going to begin, put UT Martin behind the chains. Yeah. Will now be first and 20. Ball will be spotted at the, four, at the 38 yard line. And you want a field goal out of this. That's the fourth penalty against the Skyhawks for four or 35 yards. And uh, Lindenwood would just one for five. UT Martin needs to get on the ball is when the whistle for play began. But Lindenwood's going to take a timeout. As soon as that ball was set, UT Martin let seven seconds run off the clock before making. Third, third, 30 second timeout. While we have a moment, Fuller Partners Real Estate Student Athlete of the Week is Will Cahill from the Skyhawk Cross Country Team. A Lexington, Kentucky native, Cahill helped the Skyhawk men's cross country squad on the team title at the Golden Eagle Invitational in Cookville. And the sophomore placed first in the field for an individual championship, finishing over three seconds faster than the rest of the field in the 8K event. Thanks to Fuller Partners Real Estate for sponsoring this week's Student Athlete of the Week. Skyhawks with a lead, 14-13. We are here in the second quarter with 105 remaining. And the uh, Skyhawks first and 20 after that penalty. And will UT Martin walk out of here with a field goal on this drive, a touchdown or nothing? Colton Dow has anything to do about it. You've got to believe that offensive coordinator and head coach Jason Simpson wants to get the ball to his most dynamic offensive threat at the wide receiver position. Zach Wallace, Colton Dow both on the field. Four wide receivers in the formation. Two to the left, two to the right. Ball on the far hash. UT Martin trying to answer the 13 points scored by Lindenwood. Wynn drops back, stunt coming, throws it out to his left, in the in and out of the hands, but back into the hands of George Qualls. He had it, then didn't have it, then had it. Got most of it back. <laughs> Good concentration just to stick with that one. Yeah, it looked like that was going to be an incomplete no matter what, but picking up a whole lot of this uh, yardage they needed. They were down, what, first and, and 20 and to 20, go. Yeah. It's going to pick up about half, a little bit more than half, actually. So back to the original line of scrimmage plus two yards. Will bring up a second and eight. Clock at one minute remaining in the first half. Colton Dow all by himself. Win looking that way, nothing there. Drag across the middle, hits him in stride down to the 10 yard line. EJ Smoot with a great route right across the middle in the front of a defender's face. For the Simmons Bank. First Simmons down. Bank, first down for the Skyhawks, and the ball now in the red zone. Ball will be spotted at the 12-yard line. Quickly to the line of scrimmage is UT Martin. Win claps, hands off to Wallace, cuts it up the middle to 10. Battles way down to the five, runs through another defender. Touchdown, UT Martin. Zach Wallace ran through the entire pride of Lions to get the Skyhawks back on the board. Yeah, took a lick and kept on ticking, just stayed on his feet and gets the touchdown for UT Martin to extend that lead. Now watch this play. Starts with a cutback here. I thought that was going to get him inside the five, but uh, he just broke tackle after tackle to get himself into the end zone. Give you an idea, Dylan Petty, defensive lineman for Lindenwood, is a strong young man, and Zach Wallace able to run right through that tackle to finally get points on the board. Larco's extra Larko point attempt is up, good. and it is good. Martin, UT Martin now takes a one-score lead into halftime with 34 seconds remaining. You've got to believe that Linda Wood just takes an E on the kickoff yeah, and but, then gets in there. You know, if you're the Skyhawks, you're very fortunate now that you're up 20 to 13. If you're Linden Wood, my gosh, you've got to be slightly demoralized because you have played so well in this first half and here with under a minute, give up a touchdown, and it's 21-13 yeah. uh, on the point after. But that's rough for them. It is, yeah. but you've also got to believe, too, is if you're going to do your job and go on the road to the defending Ohio Valley Conference champion, 
Coach Stuttgart has a lot of good things to go in there and talk about. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. I mean that, and that's going to be his job is to lift the morale of these players who have to be disappointed because you know they feel they played well. Well, see, you're so uh, you're so pessimistic, Chris. I'm not ever optimist, man. People that are around me, they just say how much positive energy that I have. <laughs> and so I think he goes in wow. and says, look, guys, look what we were down and what we were able to overcome and how we've come back. We get the ball to start the second half. I think it's all positive it's and, and, and rose petals, man. Kobe Smith. Spencer Red back deep. Ball goes into the end zone from Larco. Will come out to the 25 yard line. But to that point, I, I, I quit listening after yeah, you said right. I've got positive yeah. energy. Yeah, Go ahead, right. John. Yeah, Go ahead. I, was, I was just kind of reading, trying Y'all to. Y'all talked you. about Coach Simpson's changed. Maybe uh, I, at my grandfatherly age, is changing a little bit too. But for the Skyhawks, really, you look at that scoreboard to see that you're up 21-13. And again, you've not played great. You, you you've just now got 202 total yards which surpasses where Lindenwood is, you feel good about yourself knowing you're going to come out in the second half and play better. Well, you took two huge shots from in a, in a prize fighter analogy yeah, here. Yeah. Took two huge shots in the first six minutes of the contest, and you're down 14 to nothing. Mm-hmm. But you got to the corner, your cut man, your ring man, got yeah. you all pumped up and primed and back in there. And credit Lindenwood for ripping off 13 straight points. Yeah. To, to get back in this game. And uh, they're going to get the ball coming out at halftime. So we will see what Coach Stuttgart gets in there and gets finished up as the clock continues to tick. Now down inside of 12 seconds as both teams are hanging around on the field. UT Martin slowly heading to their locker room. And Lyndon Wood will do the same. First half of play in the books for the opening game of the Ohio Valley Conference for Lindenwood and UT Martin. Skyhawks lead 21 to 13 the Skyhawk Sports Network and ESPN Plus. I think Michigan, no, Michigan beat Nap State in, mm-hmm. in 08. But uh, there were three or four that had never played an FCS level So what's school. our connection with them? We played them twice. Well, I'll tell you what happened on this one is they were scheduled to play uh, Missouri or Michigan State, and that game got dropped. And we take a look at the coach's profile. And, of course, Coach Stuttgart is sixth season at Lindenwood, career record of 117 and 45. This is his third head coaching stop. Uh, in his career, and he's he's really guided this team again from this division, this tra- this transition mm-hmm. from Division Two to Division One, uh, and he's put up quite a quite a season there, and he's got a heck of a game going right now in his first Ohio Valley Conference football game. Coach's profile brought to you by Legends Bank, extraordinary people, Legends Bank. So the Boise Boise had another team. Boise on was sk- supposed to play Michigan State, and for some reason that game went away. And the last they were able to pick up the phone and, and make a call and get UT Martin uh, back on the schedule, which, of course, that was the second time UT Martin has gone out there. So, uh, you know, it was, it was a good experience for the people. It's a beautiful area of the country out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, UT Martin last year getting to go to Boise, Idaho, to play Montana State. I'll still take Boise. I'll take uh, Bozeman over Boise. Boise. Bozeman yeah. <laughs> over Boise. <laughs> yeah, I'll do that all day long. <laughs> And uh, and I guess the real question, uh, the Lindenwood fans might even be interested in this. Did you get to finally eat a Idaho potato? While you were Ninety percent <laughs> of all Idaho potatoes are sold to McDonald's for their French fries. Wow, craziness! Yes, here we Lark- go. Larco kicks it off underway, gets it out to Lindenwood. Great return, but cut down by UT Martin's Jordan Castleberry on the return for Lindenwood. Spencer Red, and again. 
Uh, Lyndon Wood really put up a lot of fight in that first half, down 14 to nothing, scores 13 unanswered. UT Martin answers at the very end on the Zach Wallace 12-yard touchdown scamper to make it an eight-point lead. Well, for UT Martin, you had a great four or five minutes, you know, to start the to start the half, and then a great two minutes to finish it. And in between that, it was really Linwood that uh, took control of this game. So, be curious to see what kind of adjustments are made here. And uh, you know, I would think one thing that UT Martin's going to do when they get on the offensive end is get Zach Wallace a little bit more involved as he's gone for over 10 yards per carry tonight. As Cade Brister comes out. He tries to find his running back. Everybody is covered up again. Brister rolls right out towards the 10 and just throws it into the ground at the feet of Andrew Martin, the running back who took over for Robert Giamo, who was hurt there in the second quarter and unable to go. But Martin came into this contest, 18 carries, 108 yards. So far tonight, he has five carries for 24 yards. A lot of that was a long run of 18. But, again, the injuries – taking effect uh, will throughout the course of this game and, and in this conference play. Eddie, you're right about that with Wallace, only six carries, but the Skyhawks only had 25 plays in the first half. Yeah, and, you know, he wasn't going to carry the ball the last two minutes right there as they were going uh, big hit right there on the backside. Brister never saw it coming. Absolutely destroyed Brister, off the three. edge by T.J. Neal. Neal just ran over the left tackle. For Lindenwood and Brissard say had no chance. Yeah. Ran over him, showed that speed. I mean, just a great combination right, of strength and speed as he he leveled him right there. Well, Chase Landcrete tried to stay in the tight end and had no chance against Neal. Third and third and ten now for Lindenwood. Lindenwood's five of eight on third down conversions. So Lindenwood trying to reestablish themselves. What do they call up here at third and ten? Trips to the right. Brister drops back, looking over the middle. UT Martin again. Beebe's Furniture Mattress Gallery sack. UT Martin once again. Neal in on the play, along with three other of his buddies as the Skyhawks get a huge third down stop. Opening drive for Lindenwood in the second half. Well, back-to-back -back big stops right there. And, and yeah, I mean, Lindenwood had the advantage having the ball coming here into the third quarter. But the Skyhawks are going to get great field position, or should, uh, to uh, have their first possession here of the third. That was all T.J. Neal for UT Martin on that defensive stop. Punt away for Lindenwood, back deep is Baker. Baker receives it to 44, gets across midfield, trips over the beak of the Skyhawk for a six-yard return. Uh, yeah, so condensation issues may be on the field, or did he just lose his footing? I think a little bit of both. That's the third time we've seen somebody go down without contact, so they, you may have something there. There may be a little a little moisture out there. Moisture what? in the air. You talked about weather could be coming in. Yeah. I mean, I woke up this morning and thought it had rained. Yeah. That's how much dew was on the ground. Yeah. St. Louis and Martin, Tennessee, a lot of times can get weather that mirrors each other. 90 degrees earlier this week, down to 56 this morning in northwest Tennessee. Wallace in at running back for UT Martin. Dresser wins, still in at quarterback. In motion, fake to Wallace. Colton Dow out, throw it headed his way up. Off the back of the defender, there will be no flag on the play. Excellent defense by Cole Duggar. Boy, they closed out right there. There was no way he was catching that football. That play was set up perfectly on a little out and up by Colton Dow. Just excellent defense by the Lions. It was. It was nice discipline on their part, as you saw some play action right there. Uh, I think everybody thought maybe get Wallace involved early, but uh, unable to get Lindenwood to, to sucker in on that. Nelson and Smoot on the right side. Tanksley, Dow on the left. Ball right in the middle of the field, on the middle of the field. Hand off to Wallace up the middle. Gets out to the 45, banging around. Finally brought down by Pettit, but not before a gain of seven on the play. Yeah, I'm not sure what Lyndon Wood's answer is for, uh, again, that UT Martin offensive line that seems to be one of the main strengths of their team. And, well, of course, we know what Zach Wallace can do. He, all he needs is just a little sliver of a hole right there. And, He's able to break tackles and always falling forward. You know, you talk about those running backs that always fall forward. He's certainly one of them. Dylan Petty does such a nice job of scraping down the line of scrimmage from that nose tackle position for the Lions. Wynn checks to the sideline, 13 seconds, 13 minutes, 11 seconds left 
in the third quarter. UT Martin forcing a quick three and out as Jason Simpson is going to take a timeout. So a 13-01 remaining in the third quarter. Jason Simpson calls a timeout. Tennessee Martin, their first timeout on the field. We will take one, too. 21-13 is your score. UT Martin will have the ball when we return on the Skyhawk Sports Network and ESPN+. Plus. UT Martin out of the timeout, facing a third and three. Trying to get on the board first in the second half after a furious Lindenwood rally in the first and second quarters. Zach Wallace, two wins right, in motion is Tanksley. Wind keeps it straight up the gut. It should be a Simmons Bank first down, and it is. Wind with his second carry of the night. Both of them resulting in first down. Yeah, good play call, and you're right, John. Coming off of that foot injury, and it wasn't too long ago. Uh, I mean, he he's he's getting back into the groove, and he'll never be what he was coming right out of high school before the injuries. But he can run the football and pick up some yardage. Trips to the left, hand off to Wallace into the boundary, out across the 40, 45, 30, 35, 20, 10, 5, run out of bounds. At the very end by Kai Ross, saving the touchdown for UT Martin. Zach Wallace was able to get to the edge right there. You know, usually we see him running people over and using that strength to uh, to gain that extra yardage right there. It was just a little burst of speed. Pick up, what you call it, about 30-yard gain? 30-yard gain, timeout on the field. And we have an injured Skyhawk here. Yes. And give, give credit to Ross there for Lindenwood to make that touchdown saving tackle. He really got after it there on the sideline. I mean, Kai Ross has had a big, big job to do tonight. The six foot two, 205 pound defensive back out of Huntington Beach, California, has had to really play on the back end and cut down some of these runs and kept UT Martin from hitting some big plays. See if we can watch that replay again of Ross getting him out of bounds. Because I thought it was going to be a touchdown. A great closing speed as you'll see by Ross just Zach look Wallace, where he came from he over there. Yeah. Wow. And, you know, Wallace is a guy that's got good speed for a 215-pound back. But yeah. uh, he's not really an angle buster. But just to pop out there and pick up that big run, Wallace now eight carries, 101 yards. So over the century mark for the sophomore. Yeah, a little extra credit to Ross, too, there at uh, taking him out low. You, you figure if he comes in there and tries to – Arm tackle or wrap him up, you know, Moss is, is ready to lower the boom. Zach Moss, I should say, to lower the boom and try to barrel him into the end zone. That was Lamar Morgan going down for the Skyhawks with the injury. The junior out of Detroit, Michigan, is up on his own and uh, walking over to the sideline. So he appears to be okay. Morgan has been battling injuries pretty much all season long. Banged up in the Western Illinois game. Got banged up last week at Boise. Very, very deep offensive line, but not necessarily an experience. But now this is probably the deepest line that UT Martin has had in a long time, but it's also very young. It's out of the injury timeout. UT Martin facing a first and goal on the 10-yard line. Direct snap to Wallace, bangs up the middle, down to the two. Direct snap to Wallace. Little trickeration by Jason Simpson. Yeah, I'm glad you said that. I think I called him Zach Moss a few minutes ago. Zach Moss, Buffalo Bills running back. Not, <laughs> not Zach Wallace right there. He runs like it. Yeah. yeah. Sam Franklin checks in at the running back position, the 5'10", 195-pound redshirt freshman from Little Rock, Arkansas. Zach Wallace, also from Arkansas, Benton, Arkansas, to be exact. Skyhawks leading at 21-13, trying to add to the lead here. 11.35 left in the third quarter. Second and goal, three-yard line. Franklin put out in motion, back across the formation. Hands off to Franklin. He's going to walk in. Yeah. Sam Franklin, touchdown, UT Martin. Yep. Play call, well executed, really walking into the end zone without a hand on him. Franklin, of course, went in motion to the right and came back across the formation, win, handed off, and he was seven yards in front of anybody from three yards out. Impressive play call, impressive opening drive in the third quarter by the Skyhawks. 
Larco on to attempt the extra point and stretch this back out. Kick is up, and the kick is good. New score, 28-13, Skyhawks on top of the Lions. We'll take a break on the Skyhawk Sports Network and ESPN+. Plus. Spencer Red, fair catch on the kickoff by Tyler Larco after the UT Martin scoring drive. Six plays, 50 yards, two minutes and 32 seconds. Sam Franklin with that three-yard scoring scamper. That gives Franklin, for the year, his first touchdown on the ground. Looks to be his third for a second for his career. So congratulations to the redshirt freshman getting in the end zone as Brister is going to bring his squad Back out, rolls left, flows out of the flats, finds his big receiver, Colby Smith, that quickly driven out of bounds, gain of three on the play. Yeah, I'm looking down there. We still don't have uh, – Giamo still not in the game, right? Correct. Right. Yeah. So, Lindenwood's having a hard time rushing the ball um, really all night long, just a little over two yards per gain on, a, uh, uh, on the ground. And then that last play, or that last series actually by Lindenwood, I thought UT Martin just brought the pressure. Uh, they, they, Going to have to put the ball in uh, Cade Brister's hands here, though, and see if they can mount some kind of a comeback here. Brister, quick throw out to the field, ridden out of bounds on the completion. Is that a first down? It was. It will be a first down on the completion. Spencer Red, a quick little throw, and almost bottled up. But nice job by Red of getting out of the out of his defender's way, jumped across for a first down for the Lindenwood Lions. Now here's what's interesting. The Skyhawks lead it 28-13, to 13, but Lindenwood has 14 first downs compared to UT Martin's 13, and the Skyhawks only have 50 more yards of total offense, despite that score at 28-13. Now the defense scoring the one touchdown for UT Martin. Brister out here once again, two red, out across the 40, down to the 45-yard line. Should be close to another first down, but you're right, Chris. This is really a 21-13 game if you take out that defensive score by UT right. Martin in the first quarter. And then the two field goals that could have been touchdowns. I mean, you know, it's really odd. It's the the stats have are deceptive against what's showing the score on the scoreboard. Yeah, one of those field goals coming after what they got down to the three-yard line, yeah. four-yard line, I think. Red heads to the sideline. Fugit, the tight end who had the touchdown catch for the first Ohio Valley Conference touchdown for the Lions back in. Hand off to Martin. Martin gets close to the line of scrimmage, extra effort. Gets across now the 48 and another first down for Lindenwood. You know, and, and I, I compare this to a, a golf game. You'll hear professional golfers sometimes say, I played well, but I didn't score well. Or they'll say, I didn't play very well, but I scored well. And it's just little things like hitting long putts. That's right. And really, and that's almost what, if you're a Lindenwood fan and you're just tuning in, they're playing pretty well. Yeah. They're just not scoring well. Tevin Ship with that last tackle. As Brister gets quickly to the line of scrimmage. Hands off to Martin out across midfield. Pretty good gain on the play on first down. Coach Stuttgart will take that all day long. One thing they have been able to do quite well is, is chew up minutes off that clock. I mean, they've really had some nice sustained drives here. Uh, again, it's not the be-all, end-all, obviously, because UT Martin leads this one by 15, two scores. But uh, almost 21 minutes with the ball in their hands for Lindenwood to just 12. 42 for uh, UT Martin. And there was a time where offensive success was measured by how long you held the football. That is slowly changing in the college game today. Brister drops back. A lot of contact downfield, flushed out of the pocket, but quickly wrapped up and dropped by Dalen Dotson. So where is the value of time of possession now, John? On the scoreboard, on who scores more points. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. it does help you if you got a, you know, if you've got a defense that uh, you know has some deficiencies or whatever. You can, you can help them out a little bit with those sustained drives. But yeah, you're right. Everybody's big strike ability right now. A lot of the runs set up to, just to hit the big play. Wholesale substitutions by both squads. Kobe Smith manned up on O'Shea Baker. Third and six for Lindenwood. Brister back, trying to find someone, throws it over the top, that's gonna to be short. Yeah. We'll see if flags come in, and they do. Yeah, kind of unnecessary, it seems like, too. I don't I don't believe he was gonna be able to make that play. Was it a even catchable? Devin Sims 
Yeah, it was close enough catch. Well, I mean, First if he could have planted and come back, yes, but he was going to be too late in that plan. I don't think that was. I don't think he needed to pull right there. Devin Sims and Peyton Rose locked horns together. Sims's hands on Rose did not allow Rose to work back towards the ball. Brister threw to his back shoulder, trying to pick up the first down. He doesn't by the play, but he does by penalty. Penalty extends the extends this drive by Lindenwood with 7:45 remaining. Chris Brinkley, John Hatler, Eddie Suter, Hardy Graham Stadium on the campus of University of Tennessee at Martin. As Brister drops back, Rose one on one again, a little battle, catch up and good. Really wow. kind of wondered there, you know, a little push off by Rose gets away with it, but. Uh, Nice, nice grab. Coach Simpson is not happy at all, and a penalty flag comes flying in here late. It's probably going to be unsportsmanlike on UT Martin. Yeah, you, you see that singled up over there, one on one, two straight plays, and I, you know, what's his thinking? Hey, you, you caught my guy. Let's 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 catch it the other way as well. I've really enjoyed watching Peyton Rose work. Yes. In this game, yeah. I, it doesn't matter. To the boundary in the middle of the field. The six foot, 193 pound senior from Wisconsin has been all over the place tonight as we get the call from the official. The pass, personal foul, face mess, offense, number one, 15 yard penalty, first down. Wow. Yeah, so, didn't see any of that. Coming. I didn't see that. I think Kobe yeah. Smith. Sean Lewis got tied up on the left-hand side, really off of the screen in a battle. Is Yeah, that's, was, yeah Lewis was tied up one-on-one -on -one with Smith. You don't see that yeah. play called very often. We talked about it two plays ago, though. You, you know, they were jockeying down here. I think even after the play, uh, those two guys were already down here. They, they've been going at each other quite a bit tonight. He got a little more testy on that one. So a first and ten is now a first in September. For Lindenwood, first and 25 to be exact. Lindenwood on the UT Martin 48. And it's late September. Late September. That's right. Wake me up when September ends. <laughs> September rain. I don't know what it was. A little green day. <laughs> September rain. Guns and roses. And another penalty by Lindenwood. Just yeah. continually shooting themselves in the foot is Gareth Warren. False start. Offense, number 78. Five-yard penalty, first down. Well, if it's first in September, now what are we looking at? Yeah, first in the end of fall. 6'5", 313-pound <laughs> sophomore. Gareth William Warren whistled for the infraction. Now first in 30. This is a situation where either team can break the will of the other. Lindenwood, if they pick up the first down, UT Martin, if they come away with it. Man. The big tight ends hit right over the middle. Big hit by O'Shea Baker and Devin Sims, but it doesn't matter. And on cue, a 35-yard pickup and first down for Lindenwood. Darren Few gets a beast. How oh. crazy is that? I mean, they've only like seven or eight pass plays to their tight ends all year. Few get not been one of those at all. And tonight with the first touchdown catch, it's just a huge – I'm not sure that might have been bigger than the touchdown play. Here's the replay. Yeah, just right to I it. I thought he was going to break this one. He almost he almost yeah. maintained balance and kept going. Devin Sims had him wrapped up. The big man ran right through it, cleaned up by Baker. Brister now rolls to the outside, out in the flats again is Fugit, but cut down this time by O'Shea Baker, but not before a gain of five. Those are just such a demoralizing – situation for your defense and obviously conversely for your offense it really sucked the air right out of this crowd crowd was getting excited on that first and 30 then you look right around lindenwood hits the big play this quiet is this crowd is quieted again well i'm like i'm gonna one word that would describe what they're doing is really just perseverance they just they're playing the same no matter what's happening brister quickly throws the out pattern it's going to be close to the sticks on the reception is smith for Lindenwood, and a first down will be first and goal for Lindenwood. Ball will be spotted on what looks to be the nine-yard line. So UT Martin had pushed it back to a first and 30. Lindenwood was on the 48-yard line, one play, first down, and now Lindenwood is knocking on the door of answering the UT Martin score. 5.55 remaining in the third quarter. 
Smith now in motion to the hash. Brister rolls his way, moves out, dra- tied in, dragging across the backside. Ball skips and hits the ground. Incomplete pass. UT Martin, excellent job on defense. Well, you know, earlier you you compared this to a boxing match. And again, in the third quarter, very similar to early in the first quarter, UT Martin threw a couple of punches. And maybe the knees were wobbly there on Lindenwood, but that was not the case uh, after they regained their composure and they're standing back up strong. On that last play, Brister rolled to his left. Rose was dragging across the backside of the end zone. But excellent defensive pursuit by UT Martin. Now second and goal from the nine. Martin in at tailback for Linden one. In motion, Smith again. Hands off to Martin up the middle. Clogged up around the five, but the pile's still moving. Everybody trying to get to go somewhere. Looks like a little league soccer match. <laughs> we will see where the ball is spotted. The ruling on the field is that the runner's forward progress will stop. Third down. Linden was looking for a yeah. touchdown right there. There's a Forward progress wasn't stopped. We, we're in the end zone. How could it have been stopped? All 22 bodies on the field <laughs> were in one condensed area. And if you've ever had a young son or daughter play Eurek League soccer, that's exactly what <laughs> it looks like. It's like an, <laughs> a, a, an amoeba in yeah. biology. You don't even Just know who's got the ball. A blob moving. Third and three. Third and goal. Martin. Tailback for Lindenwood. Brister surveying the field. Throw the back pylon. UT Martin in pursuit. No flag, no good. Fourth down coming. Excellent job in defense by Devin Sims for UT Martin is a much larger Kobe Smith was the intended target. Yeah, not sure about that pass either. He wasn't leading him to the corner. It wasn't really a back shoulder. It looked like almost an in-between. They have run that play three times today, have the Lions down inside the five, and the Lions are going to go for it. All right, fourth down, Charles. Coach Stuttgart needs a touchdown. So the crowd rises to his feet. Hand off to Brister, rolls to his left, looks back to the right, nothing there. UT Martin in pursuit. He wiggles through it, throw into the end zone, incomplete. Fourth down stop by UT Martin. Turnover on down. First down, Tennessee Martin. Timeout on the field. And we will take one as well. Enormous fourth down stop. As Lindenwood was facing a fourth and goal from the three. 28-13, UT Martin on top of Lindenwood. Sauk Sports Network and ESPN+. Plus. Uh, in full season performance here. It's 28-13. The Skyhawks are leading Lindenwood with 438 remaining. And guess what, fellas? Lindenwood now with more total yards than UT Martin, 273 to 252, but not getting anything in on the points there on the scoreboard after they'll, that long drive. They'll take it, and John talked yeah. about it. They'll take the uh, – UT Martin will take the negative on the uh, time of possession as long as they maintain yeah. the scoreboard. And off to Zach Wallace, who busts out across the 5, one. 10, 20, 25, 30, he 40, goes. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, 5, touchdown, UT Martin. Zach Wallace, 97 yards for the pay dirt. You said something about breaking the will uh, a couple of series ago, right? Is that one of those? That's one of them. The will? I, you know, you got to expect you're going to go Wallace here to get out from. Yeah, take a look at this again. I'm going to shut up. That is excellent blocking at the front by Zach Wallace, and I don't believe he was ever touched. I mean, he turns it up right here. He Look at the separation that he creates. Yeah, give that young man a ton of credit. And we talked about it earlier as Lark goes on to attempt the extra point. Kai Ross has cleaned up a lot on the back end for this Lindenwood defense, was unable to do it there. Extra point attempt is good. UT Martin. Now up 35-13 with 4.25 to go in the third quarter on the Skyhawk Sports Network and ESPN+. Plus. Well, a historic game, especially here for Linden with their first OBC game. But that was a historic play, John Hadler, that we just saw. Longest show rush from scrimmage in UT Martin history was back in 2008. 
Braden Young, a 94-yard scamper against Eastern Illinois. Zach Wallace just went 97 to the house to set a new record for UT Martin. Longest run from scrimmage. Congratulations to the red shirt sophomores. Larco's kick sails into the end zone. Spencer Red wants no part of that, and rightly so, as Lindenwood will now try and match such a huge play for UT Martin on that previous drive. Yeah, Eddie, that, that's tough to overcome. That's certainly demoralizing. We, we immediately see the, all of that total yards compar- yardage comparison that I gave you changed <laughs> completely now. 349 <laughs> yards for the Skyhawks compared to 273 for Linden. What on the one play? Yeah, I think everybody expected the ball to go to Wallace maybe two or three times in a row yeah. right there just to yeah. just to try to get a little distance out away from the, the shadow of the goalpost, as they mentioned. But uh, he said, no, nah, we're not going to worry about that. I'll just, I'll just take this one, 97. We'll be done with this drive. And that's and, where and, we go. You know, Lindenwood does such a nice job in their scoring drives of, of chewing up four, six, yeah. seven minutes off the clock as a handoff to Martin. He gets five on the first – or four on the first carry, make it second six. But, you know, we talked about Martin it, that time of possession. Right. That mm-hmm. that drive for UT Martin mm-hmm. took all of 13 seconds <laughs> yeah, one play. And, and yeah. as far as them chewing up clock and, and trying to be kind of ground control yeah. and yeah. Yeah. these dink and dunks, they're going to kind of have to have to pick up the pace a little bit here now, down 35 to 13. You know, Lindenwood is coming here, only one turnover today, which should be into their advantage. They've done a decent job at the line of scrimmage, but still find themselves down big as a quick out to Uh-oh, Red and out. right on cue, a fumble by Mr. Lindenwood, second turnover of the day. Wow. Carson Lindenwood Evans, fumble recovered. Yeah, if this, uh, if this fumble First recovery down. stands, I mean, you talk about a turn of events here over the last two or three minutes. Well, and it's two huge turnovers, the one pick six, and now the Skyhawks' great field position after yeah, that I, th- I think they got it, too. I think they covered it up pretty easily. Yeah. Wouldn't be surprised if we do get a review here. We shall watch the white hat to see what kind of signals he gives. But we do know Carson Evans came out, looked like O'Shea Baker on the hit, is red on the quick out. He's trying to make a move, and Helmet put on the football, and it popped loose. Sam Franklin in it running back now for UT Martin. Ball Frank- is going to be on the 25-yard line of Lindenwood. Franklin more that speedster, likes to get to the edge. Dresser win, looking, hands off to Franklin up the middle. Trips over one of the Lindenwood defenders. On the tackle for Lindenwood will be David Whittemore, but not before a gain of three on the play. Really felt like UT Martin would take a shot in the end zone after a big turnover, but Coach Simpson, ball control offense here, really has established the line of scrimmage about midway through that second quarter. Trying to get another score to put this one out of reach as well as this defense has played since the second quarter. And off to Franklin once again, shake and bake out across the 20. Down to the 15, will be close to a first down. The far side official gives a left foot spot. It will be a first down. If not, it will be third down. That's a nice run, really showing the patience on the shake and bake to let the hole open. You watch all of these colleges work on those drills where they run their feet, stop, shift one way, their direction, and explode. Franklin just took that from practice to the game. Third and one for UT Martin on the Lindenwood 16. Dresser win, claps, checks to the sideline, trips to the right, ball in the middle of the field. Look for Colton Dow to drag across a, just underneath the linebackers to try and get him a score here. On the read, but nope, Franklin. Touchdown, UT Martin. 16-yard scamper for the Scott Taylor State Farm touchdown. Just went right up the middle, walks into the end zone, and the Skyhawks have got the ground game going here in the third quarter. Yeah, we'll take a look at it again here. Franklin with his second touchdown run of the night. Uh, to go right along there with Zach Wallace also with two touchdowns on the, on the ground for UT Martin tonight. Franklin entered this contest with only one touchdown to his name. Right now he's doubled that up tonight as Larco's extra point attempt is good. New score. UT Martin 42, Lindenwood 13, and the Skyhawks have absolutely exploded in the third quarter. Well, they have, making the big plays, obviously, but just an all-around UT Martin effort. And I've always felt consistently since Jason Simpson has coached UT Martin 
And I, we'd have to go back statistically all the way back to two, 2006. And, and it tells you a lot about a coaching staff is that the Skyhawks have consistently played well in the second half. And, John, we really saw it last year during the championship season. That, that was a team that turned it around in the second half in so many games and played better. They did. It's really spilled over into this year yeah. as well. The, a lot of that's a consistency on the defensive side of the football. You take a look at this third quarter alone, UT Martin, 21 points in the third quarter, 172 total yards to only 75 for Lindenwood. 172 of them have been on the ground. So dominance being established in this third quarter at the point of the attack for the Skyhawks. Larco's kick is boomed into the end zone. Fair coach or fair catch called by Red in Lindenwood. Who's given up three un actually four unanswered scores towards the end of the second half. Into the first half, into the second half, excuse me. Now find themselves in need of seven. You know, and you mentioned that I look statistically. UT Martin offensively has almost done in the third quarter what they did in the entire first half, almost uh, stat for stat. And with the score, 21 points in the first half, 21 points here in the third quarter. Well, yeah, you, you, you had Zach Wallace go for 97 yards in one play. That's, that's a big chunk of it right there. So Lindenwood had a great drive that stalled to begin the third quarter, a turnover a few minutes ago. Now we will see what Coach Stuggart chooses to do as Martin picks up two on his first carry. O'Shea Baker with the tackle will bring up second and eight. Lyndon Wood on their own 27-yard line. Rose and Smith, the wide receivers for the Lions. Brister checks to the sideline as the clock continues to run. 145 now remaining in the third quarter. Snap to Brister. Surveys the field, dumps it off to Martin and catches around the 30. Leaps for a first down. Tackled at the 38. So again, Brister has done an excellent job this evening of just checking down through his progressions. A lot of the reasons because these defensive backs for UT Martin, Eddie, are just absolutely gobbling up these receivers. Yeah, they have. You talk about the check down and uh... – Almost every time it's been to his running back. Of course, earlier in the game you had uh, Giama, who is – when did he leave? In the second quarter second with that quarter. injury. Hadn't seen him again. Giamo finished his night with four receptions for 35 yards. Now Martin got his first one. Brister, pass, catch by Smith for another first down. Cannot rest on your laurels despite this big lead. Just uh, – we hope Giamo's okay and can bounce back yeah. after that injury. Interestingly, and I was going to mention it, and he went out of the game. He is the only Tennessee native, as you said, on the Linden One yep. roster. The only one. Bartlett High School down in Bartlett, Tennessee, a suburb of Memphis. One of the areas of Shelby County that just continues to explode. 29-point lead for UT Martin. Brister uncorks one down the sideline looking for Rose. And another spectacular catch by Peyton Rose. Has there been a time Rose has been one-on-one -on -one with a DB that he hasn't come down with the ball? I'm it's it's just been an unbelievable effort tonight. And if if you're UT Martin and you're Andre Brackett, you can't cover that any better. Mm -hmm. And I think his body language <laughs> showed right. that. He's like, either you pat the guy on the back or go, okay. Hand off to Martin for Lindenwood. Tries to pick his way down to the one-yard line. Play started at the three, and that's the end of three. Three quarters in the it's books. The end of the third quarter. 42 for the Skyhawks, 13 for the Lions. UT Martin trying to pick up their first OVC conference win of the year on Skyhawk Sports Radio Network and ESPN Plus. Forty-two thirteen, the Skyhawks with the lead. Fourth quarter set to begin. Here's John Hatler with a play-by-play. -play. UT Martin with 28 unanswered points. Spanning back to the end of the second quarter. 21 scored in the third. Brister back trying to get his team in the end zone. Backpedaling, backpedaling, throws it up out of the back of the end zone. Smart play by the senior as nothing was working for Lindenwood. 
Yeah, and you had three UT Martin defenders bearing down on him right there. This is an important, uh, well, I guess an important drive for either team. It would be an important stand for UT Martin. But if Lindenwood could score here, make it a three-possession game, it's not out of the realm of possibility. But you got to think if they don't put one in the end zone right here. Shades of Dwight Clark and Joe Montana for this Cowboy fan on that last play. <laughs> Third and goal from the two. Hand off to Martin, tries to get up in the middle. Wow. Met the line of scrimmage by UT Martin's Christian Dow, and it stops him short. Yeah, it looked like at least his momentum was going to take him back in there, but uh, Dow spent a little bit of time in the weight room right there. He not only grabbed him, but was able to pull him backwards. Six foot two, 280 pound sophomore from Memphis. Looked like one of those cutting horses. Just yeah. dropped his haunches and held on for dear life. <laughs> Fourth and one. Goal to go. For Linden one in motion is Smith. Hand off to Martin again, and he walks in. Excellent play by Lindenwood to answer. The UT Martin scored just a few short minutes ago. Looks like UT Martin kind of maybe been expecting a sneak right there. For Martin, that is his third touchdown of the season. 12 carries tonight for 45 yards, now 13 for 46. It appears as though Lindenwood is going to open up the two-point playbook. So they have asked the ball to be moved to the left hash as Brister checks to the sideline. Probably see Brister, what, get a little roll out. He seems like he's most comfortable when he's getting outside the tackle boxes. That rolling pocket is always a nice play for a running quarterback. Brister checks with him. Into the game is Darren Fugit. Need to find the tight end if you're UT Martin as he's had a heck of a game. Fugit works off the block. Brister's trying to find him. In pursuit is Neal. Throws it up, just it's up in the back like and nothing away. there. Looked like he had his tight end open there for just a split second, but uh, by the time he had his hips turned around and his eye, yeah, I guess eyes in that direction, UT Martin had done a nice job of converging. Neal and Dotson for the Skyhawks pressured Brister. Nothing working, so two-point conversion pass. Falls harmlessly to the turf. 14-18 remaining in this contest. And guys, this is the opening Ohio Valley contest for both teams looking to to get out there early and take the lead in the conference. Most of people's non-conference play is over. UT Martin will have two non-conference games the rest of the way heading to Houston Baptist on October 29th, which will be the week after little brother goes plays big brother That's in Knoxville, right. Tennessee. He's Tennessee Volunteers will welcome UT Martin to the friendly confines of Neyland Stadium on the 22nd. Yeah, of course, that, that game's getting a lot of tension around here just with the familiarity of both schools. As I like to tell all my Knoxville friends, the real big orange. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Heading to Knoxville in a few weeks. So Siebert set to kick off for Lindenwood. Sam Franklin, Jordan Castleberry back for UT Martin. We're going to see an onside by any chance or just play it out with this much time, but you're down three scores. We already saw him get aggressive there going for the two-pointer early. You're going to have to get touchdowns and twos. So you might as well go for it each time. Siebert approaches the ball for Lyndon Wood and does do that, and that ball's probably going to score it out of bounds and not go 10. Almost got to the 10-yard threshold. Good try to Try and deek UT Martin there, but to no avail. But to your point. To your, to your point, Eddie, I think if they get, get the ball there, go for it again, you would probably see a lot more onside kicks on the way. But nonetheless, UT Martin will head back out on the field. And they'll try to salt it away. They were probably going to try to run a little bit of clock on that last play, but uh... – 97 yarder on your first play from scrimmage. I'm sure they would take that right here as well if they could get it. But, you know, working from the Lindenwood side of the field, already in good shape, probably see a lot of ground attack. 33 point lead for UT Martin. John Hatler, Eddie Suter, Chris Brinkley with you from Hardy Graham Stadium, the campus of the University of Tennessee at Martin. You see Franklin still in there at tailback. Toss to Tanksley, gets out across the 40, tries to cut up field to the 35, 30. Pushed out at the 25, so a nice little play by UT Martin out of the timeout after the score for a Simmons Bank first down. 
Yeah, he just hit a second gear, didn't he, once he got outside. Uh, he hit that sideline, and he turned it upfield quick. Tanksley, the leading receiver tonight for UT Martin. That was going to be his seventh grab on the evening. Colton Dow went over the 2,100-yard career mark earlier tonight. Zach Wallace sits at 201 yards receiving. He's back in the game. The last one to go over the 200-yard mark was Abu Torre against Murray State back in 2011. As long as Zach Wallace continues to fall forward from the line of scrimmage, he will become the second player to do so in the last 11 years. Pick up of five on the play. Excuse me, four on the play there. We'll bring up second and six. Is that Wallace heading back to the sideline? It is. Franklin now back in the contest for UT Martin. In motion. And resetting his Dow. Hand off to Franklin. Cuts it up around the 20. Now 15, 10, 5. Touchdown. UT Martin, third time's a charm for Sam Franklin. Trifecta. Nice little stretch by UT Martin to get to the boundary, cut it back upfield. Sam Franklin does the rest. Yeah, he got to that outside and then just made two or three guys miss on that Lindenwood backfield area. The redshirt freshman came into this contest with only one touchdown to his name. Here's the replay again, just walking it into the end zone. Larco's extra point attempt is up and good. And, and now good. a 30-point lead for the Skyhawks. 49-19, UT Martin over Lindenwood. We will, we will take, take a, break a break on ESPN Plus, the Skyhawk Sports Radio Network. 49-19, the Skyhawks leading Lindenwood in Lindenwood's first Ohio Valley Conference game in the history of the school. I'm Chris Brinkley with Eddie Suter and John Hatler here and the rest of the crew on ESPN+. Plus. Sam Franklin tonight with three touchdowns, a 15th player in UT Martin history to do so with three rushing touchdowns in one game. That's actually happened twice this year for UT Martin. Zach Wallace hit pay dirt against Western Illinois in the opening mm -hmm. contest of the season. Larco's kick goes out of the back of the end zone. Lindenwood will come out in an attempt to try and get something going. Yeah, look, people have probably tuned in and, and looking at this game, if you tuned in late and just think that, I don't know, UT Martin controlled it from the start to finish, is not the case. UT Martin... The way the game started, we thought we might see a score like this, right? We did. Uh, UT Martin up 14 fan, to nothing yes. quickly. You know, just punched him in the mouth. Lindenwood, though, uh, with an outstanding, I don't know, 25 minutes of football there in that first half. Brister rolls to the right, hits the big tight end. Fugit once, once more takes a bunch of Skyhawks to try and get this man oh, to the ground and hadn't done it yet. Excellent effort by Fugit. Gain of 16 on the play and a first down for Lindenwood. And Fugit is slow to get up. Look, there's dragging defenders, and then there's dragging defenders. He had four or five UT Martin defenders. Timeout. Time Third injury. Seven extra yards after the catch in contact. And Fugit is not feeling very well on the UT Martin sideline as he battled to drag those players. And it was it was reminiscent, just kind of the movement of when Bo Jackson hurt his yeah, hip. Just yeah. he got out in front and. Yep. Had people on his back, and you hope that the young man is okay and he's being up. helped up. Thank goodness. Yeah, course, really limp in there. Then again, he came into this game with uh, no receptions on the year. I think he's a freshman, though, so probably yep. just kind of starting to work himself into the offense. As a matter of fact, you look at the depth chart we're given. I don't know if they've got injuries in the tight end department or not, but not listed as the, uh, the one of the top two on their list there. But he's had a heck of a game tonight. 6'3", 228-pound freshman is – was mentioned from Bolivar, Missouri. Yeah, he'll head out now. Of course, Lindenwood played, has played two games coming into this contest. This is UT Martin's fourth game of the season. One thing he'll always have, that first touchdown catch from Lindenwood in the OVC. So Lindenwood back out after the first down from Brister to Fugit, trying to get something going here with 12.25 remaining in the game. Brister 
flushed out to the right, trying to find something. Smith works back, nothing there, just floats it out of bounds. Smith was locked up by Sean Lewis. Couldn't go deep, couldn't come short. Lewis had perfect defense. Yeah, and pretty smart play again by Brister. Earlier in the game, you know, you probably see him trying to scramble and make a play right there with his legs, but wise decision right there, uh, just remaining healthy and injury-free uh, down 49-19, probably a little bit more important at this stage of the game. Kobe Smith with five catches, 41 yards on the evening. Peyton Rose, six catches, 123 yards as Martin gets the handoff. Gets to the line of scrimmage, pops through, picks up roughly three on the play. We came back from break. You mentioned Franklin's three touchdowns. The most rushing touchdowns in a game by a player was Bobby Fowler back in 1957. Yeah. A chance to meet him at one of our big homecoming events. Most um, catches, re touchdown receptions in a game is Quentin Sims who had five. And the most thrown TDs in a game is the, the historic Murray game where Derek Carr threw seven touchdown passes. Almost had a perfect passer rating. 18 touchdown passes were thrown in that game. That's so crazy looking back at that game. Yeah. And, of course, Derek helped us on the radio last year. Now the head football coach in high school at Milan, Tennessee. Brister tries to find another tight end, but excellent job by Devin Sims to smack it away. Pass intended for Abe Hare, six foot four, 220-pound freshman tied in out of Taylor, Missouri. So this Lindenwood squad, you go through it, chock full of freshmen and sophomores. Yeah, they a bright future ahead for them for sure. And, and a team that, again, has shown a lot of resilience in this game despite that 49-19 score. You look back at that, the Carr-Murray game, was he 49-51? What was it, John? It was the five incomplete passes. Five was incomplete. I do remember okay. that. I remember asking him at the Hall of Fame induction ceremony last year if he remembered the five incomplete passes, and he gave me a very, very <laughs> mean look. <laughs> he remembered every one of them. Riley Cooper's punt into Andre Brackett's hands, a six-yard punt return for him, said Riley Ripper, not Time Riley out. Cooper. on the field. Riley Ripper averaging 41.6 yards per punt. We will take a break. 11-16 remaining in the game. 49-19, UT Martin on top of Lindenwood. Skyhawk Sports Network and ESPN+. Plus. 11 minutes, 16 seconds remaining here. We are in the fourth quarter. 49-19, the Skyhawks leading Lindenwood. Chris Brinkley with Eddie Suter, and here's John Hatler with the play-by-play. -play. Andre Brackett on the West Tennessee Healthcare punt return. Turned it six. UT Martin's going to take over. Ball on their own 20-yard line as Dresser win, claps, option, reverse. Tanksley, speedster, out across the 20, 25, 30, stutters, smacked, tackled, going to be brought down around the 32-yard line, but not before another Simmons Bank first down. So taking the hit right there, he's just trying to stay in, make sure the clock continues to run, I assume. Absolutely. And uh, run a play like that, what, just to kind of put it in the backs of the minds of your opponents to coming up, something they have to prepare for here? Uh, you really know that at this point in the game that Lindenwood's got to force UT Martin to go three and out in order to get the ball back. And uh, we'll be pinning their ears back and try and get into the backfield and just get a little reverse action going there with Avante Tanksley, who's probably one of the fastest players on the team. Franklin still in at running back, comes in, sets next to Dresser Wins left. Fake, flip out here to Tanksley once again, gets out across the 35, 40, wrestled and tackled to the ground. That by the big linebacker. David Whittemore's had quite a game tonight. Six foot one, 225 pound freshman out of Indianapolis, yeah. Indiana. Here's a crazy. Timeout for an injury. Player down. Timeout. A, a, a crazy stat, one of the keys to the game for UT Martin was to do better with third down conversions. Uh, in this game, they certainly have compared to the last two games. But UT Martin has only six third down conversions. They're four for six. Well, that's better. It has been. UT Martin really struggled. Went to number five Missouri State two weeks ago. It was three of ten. So we see Lloyd Lockett getting spun around by his own teammate, unfortunately, and banged up on the play. But UT Martin went to Missouri State, was 3 of 10 on third downs last week. Had to Boise was 1 of 11. Mm. Not so much about how many third down conversions you get as much as it is a percentage. The percentage and tonight and yeah. has, has been yeah. much better for and UT four Martin. 4 of 6 is certainly much better. For Lindenwood, they're 5 of 12. 
And then you look at first downs. Lindenwood actually has 22 first downs in the game compared to UT Martin's 18. When you start talking about those those third downs, and you want to be, as a defense, you want to be, as an, excuse me, as an offense, if you can get that third down conversion rate to the mid-40s, that's where you want to be. And tonight the defense has kept Lindenwood Lions from doing so. Dresser win, drops back. Tanksley took off running deep. Dresser win taking a shot. Pass interference probably not going to be called at this stage of the game as Tanksley was sawed off. They're around the 20-yard line, but good job by the officials of just tucking the old flag in the pocket. I thought he was going to I thought he was going to make a play right there. He did a nice job of breaking off of his route and coming back to kind of split those two defenders. But as you said, uh, a little bit of slight contact here might have might have forced the issue. Tanksley had the touchdown reception earlier. Well officiated ball game this evening has been a good flow. Outside of one or two little hand-to-hand -hand combats that either side could get frustrated with in the second quarter, these officials have managed this game quite well. In motion is Fields. Handoff up the middle. Wynn decides to keep it himself. Excuse me. Pick up. It's three Wynn times, I think. You're right. He's run for it himself to get that first down. And they've all been three down. Gain, third down situations. Gain of four on the play. Simmons Bank first down. UT Martin continuing to move the chains. Their 19th first down of the contest. Zach Wallace and Jordan Castleberry in at running back for UT Martin. Fields in motion. Wind rolls to the right. Fields was open trying to find Smoot. Good job of checking it down. Hits his receiver. Out across the 40 down to the 35-yard line. On the reception is Colton Dow. Nice tackle because he was gone. Looked like he had, yeah, I yeah. thought he was going to break that one, a little, a little ankle trippage. Colton Dow with the reception. Trying to move into second place all time. He will need 17 more yards to do that. To Dow to the sideline. Wynn still in at quarterback. Hand off to Franklin. Pops to the outside, out across the 35. Runs through two defenders. Down to the 31-yard line. In on the tackle for Lindenwood. Franklin on the carry. Gain the Brett to bring up second and hit. Three. Six foot one, 202-pound sophomore. Another one of those young underclassmen. Mm -hmm. Lindenwood, you can, you can rest assured that they are going to be a force to be reckoned with as they enter the OVC as we have a player down Time on out. the field. On the field. You, you look at the rushing yards in this game now, the Skyhawks with 294 compared to only 62 for Lindenwood. Big, big differential. Timeout. We'll take a timeout with eight minutes and 29 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. 49. Eight minutes, 29 seconds remaining in this one. 49-19, UT Martin leading Lindenwood. Graham Stadium, Martin, Tennessee. Here's John Hatler. Dresser win out of the timeout. Sam Franklin straight behind him. Goes up, checks the line of scrimmage. DJ Nelson now in at tight end. He moves to the left-hand side. Franklin comes to Wynn's left. Wynn drops back one-on-one -on -one to the outside, floats it to the back shoulder, catches up and forced out of bounds for a Simmons Bank first down, UT Mark. On the reception, E.J. Smoot. Yeah, we've seen Lindenwood do that exact same thing with their receivers. UT Mark coming in a nice one-on-one, -on -one. just throw it to that back shoulder, a little timing play. Dresser Wynn stretching the field this evening. He's been very efficient Four games into the season, completing over 64% of his passes coming into this contest. UT Martin will be first and goal from the seven-yard line. Win looks to his left. Flushed out, throws off his back foot. Ball pounced up in the end zone and incomplete. Ball hit four different people's hands before falling on the tee in UT Martin. Pass intended for E.J. Smoot. Chris, I got a stat question for you. Went off his back foot. As you see, he just kind of threw it up there. That's one thing Coach Simpson has been worried about with Dresser Wynn so far this year is having to throw off of his back foot and not stepping in 
to the throws almost cost the Skyhawks there. Chris, we've got Franklin there in the backfield. Uh, how many times has UT Martin had somebody go for four rushing touchdowns? Well, y'all talked about the third. That's a good question. I know. Brayton that's why I Young, it at you. four touchdowns. You got East one. East Illinois, go. October of 2008. So Sam Franklin looking to become the second one to do that as Jason Simpson takes a timeout. Charge timeout. Tennessee Martin, their second, 30-second timeout. 30-second timeout. We've hit the 9 o'clock hour. We knew there was a chance of rain late in the evening, 30% chance of rain. I'm looking at the radar. I think it's going to miss us just south of us here. It is. My knees yeah. never started hurting. We're okay. good. <laughs> Thanks, Grandpa. <laughs> 49-19 to score, UT Martin leading by 30. And, you know, we really kind of talked about what this would look like. How would a Division II school coming into the Division I ranks fare against, uh, you know, a, a top 25 program? And, of course, you would think, well, maybe not too well from the get-go. But as we saw, as Lyndon Wood showed in that first half, oh, there's no a, doubt. as long as no. there's a lot of fight in this team, yes. the ability to score. Yeah. Chalk full of sophomores and freshmen. Absolutely. This is going to be an unbelievable football and, team. And here's the sad thing. When you see, and then this game's got a long way to go, 727 remaining. When you see the score at the bottom of the ticker on ESPN or some of the other, you, you, you're going to think that UT Martin dominated this yeah. game. And they really didn't. Now, they dominated the third quarter, yeah. but they didn't dominate the game. Trying to be dominant and get into the end zone once again as Franklin now in motion. Wind drops back, throws off his back foot again, floats it up to the end zone. Touchdown, UT Martin. And the gritty is struck as DJ Nelson catches his second touchdown pass of the year. What a catch there and a little dance afterwards as the Skyhawks celebrating after two losses on the road. It's good to be back at Graham Stadium. Man, we just saw the replay too. What about that throw by Dresser Wynn falling backwards with the Lindenwood uh, yeah. defender? Really had him wrapped up, it looked like. Larco on to attempt the extra point, trying to stay perfect on the evening, and he does. We'll need an ice bath after this game. New score, UT Martin 56, Lindenwood 19. DJ Nelson had a coming out party at Missouri State University where he hauled in five catches for 84 yards and had a big touchdown, the red shirt freshman out of York, Alabama. Yeah, first catch right there for him for tonight, but talked about Wynn falling backwards. How much confidence and trust did he have uh, talking about Dresser Wynn there and DJ Nelson to, to put that one kind of up for grabs and, and just trust uh, his tight end to come down with that ball. Dresser Wynn had a very good arm coming out of Dresden High School in 2016. Injured his shoulder at Eastern Illinois his sophomore year. Had to have it surgically repaired, re-anchored, went through a long rehab process. Not only has he gotten his arm, his arm strength better than it used to be, uh -huh. he's really made an effort in this in the last two seasons to tighten up his throwing motion, which, uh, you know, he, he was a mid-80s, upper-80s fastball in high school. Uh, I would – Venture to guess right now where he where he to get in a throwing program mm -hmm. for baseball he would be a 93 94. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He had him at 92 right after shoulder surgery got back, but he's yeah. probably a, a lot better than that now. As Larco kicks the ball off to Lindenwood once again, ball is going to be hauled in at the two. That's red. Out across the 15, tries to get down to the 20, wrestled down at the 18. Well, at the, at the I don't want to sound like Larry King, but after you say all that, I have to ask why. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> why? How, how do you improve on that after the surgery and can actually throw faster? Now, we all know that I squeezed a four-year education <laughs> into eight years at UT Martin. Right. But it's much like the Tommy John surgery when there's a time for rest, there's a yeah. time for – uh, your your muscles to heal, to become stronger, to get your tendons tightened back up and everything else, you're able to turn around and, and be a little bit stronger after those surgeries. And we've seen that, uh, especially in Tommy John at the Major League Baseball level. We have seen it. And I've also got an IMDB, and I can't remember, but you had Rodenhauer, the kid uh, that breaks his arm in the uh, the baseball game, the elementary school kid, and then he comes out and he ends up throwing like 100 miles yeah. an hour. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> New quarterback. <laughs> For Lindenwood, into the game is Cole Duggar, six foot one, one hundred and eighty-two pound sophomore, out of Owasso, Oklahoma. 
Now, Listen. you're not recommending I break anything. No, right? I would not. Not at our age. It's harder to, <laughs> okay. it's harder to recover. Tightens those tendons. That's right. <laughs> Now, you know, you got to give Dresser credit, though, with the arm injury or the shoulder injury and the ankle injury. To, a lot of people would have been broken after either one of those. He sustained both, and, and you're right, has come back better. Duggar back to pass, crossing around over the top, and guess who? If I'm coming into the game and I'm Lyndon Wood, I'm going to find Peyton Rose as well. <laughs> Seventh catch of the day. For Rose, first down, field flip for Lyndon Wood. Yeah, most of his damage has been up that sideline, but you see right here he just streaks over the middle. And if not for uh, UT Martins, well, it's not Tankersley. It's a number four. I don't have a four defender on my statue. I can't even tell what the, the gray shirt's out there. It may <laughs> we're, not we're be number four. We're struggling a little bit the numbers. <laughs> so, Duggar again, back to pass, trying to find something. Throws the ball to Smith. He catches it the 45, but an incomplete pass. Stepped out of bounds. Defensive coordinator Chris Belizzi was on top of it as well. I would like to see the Rose highlight post-catch moments because he just always just stands up and like, yeah, I caught it. <laughs> Every single time and looks around like, do you all see that? <laughs> Justin Williams. The new tailback in for the Lions, 5'8", 186-pound junior out of St. Louis, Missouri. Came into this contest, five carries, 22 yards, and a score. Duggar rolls out to his left. Nice job right there by Duggar of dropping his hands, being able to get rid of it where it didn't get knocked down. A little Aaron Rodgers look about him, Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, he's come out firing too. You know, you, you kind of think sometimes your backup quarterback comes in and they do a couple of nice little easy run plays. Uh, he, he's out there trying to get them down the field. We'll probably see a quarterback change with UT Martin too here in the final minutes of this one. 5.54 remaining, Skyhawks leading Lindenwood 56-19. Third and 10, Lindenwood on third down conversions. Dig routes coming. Rose, the intended target. Three defenders for UT Martin around Rose. That's pretty smart if you're Chris Belize. Pass incomplete. Looking into Cole Duggar. Several of these players for Lindenwood played at Jinx High School in Tulsa, Oklahoma. One of the premier high school programs in the nation. Duggar, not one of them, as he went to Owasso High School in Owasso, Oklahoma. Yeah, they got seven players on the team from Oklahoma, 40 from Missouri, just the one from Tennessee. Riley Ripper, his second punt of the night, averaging 41.67 yards per punt coming into this game, and he gets away a pretty good one here. Bracket backs up, safely receives it on the eight-yard line. Timeout on the field. And that's we're going to take one too. 56 19, UT Martin on top of Lindenwood. 540 remaining on the Skyhawk Sports Radio. Martin leading Lindenwood 56 19 here with five minutes 40 seconds remaining in this fourth quarter. I'm Chris Brinkley with Eddie Suter and John Hatler at Graham Stadium in Martin, Tennessee. Here's John with a play by play. Cornelius Brown, the fourth transfer from Georgia State, now in for UT Martin. Hands it off right up the middle. To Jordan Castleberry, who bounces outside after being bottled up. Ended up gaining a three on the play. Nice run by Castleberry. And there's the change of quarterback that we expected for UT Martin. And he's seen action this season already. Yeah, and that was the plan coming in anyway, was to get him some some activity. I think uh, Coach Simpson feels like he's a, a better than average backup for sure. Round two of seven for 22 yards and also has the ability to do that right there is get out in open space with an excellent open field tackle by the Lions. No on the play. stop for Lindenwood was Jaden Patrick, 5'11", 174-pound. Guess where he's from? Or guess, how, guess what grade he's in? Freshman, freshman. Oh, okay. from Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. Okay. Broken Arrow High School, where star Hatler Meek, UT Martin. Oh, yeah. Hall of Fame inductee lives. Pass intended for D. Ray Lawrence. Goes out of bounds. 
Your familiarity with Texas and Oklahoma <laughs> and Arkansas and Louisiana geography is phenomenal, John Adler. Thank you. You're welcome. You. You're welcome. I, I even you told me how to get to Bucky's. <laughs> <laughs> and, right. in my first real trip to Texas not too long ago. There you see the pass from Quad or Brown. You'll notice he's six foot six now. He's got some height. Yeah. Tallest uh, quarterback in the country I saw was somewhere over on the okay. West Coast was six foot nine. Okay. Quad Brown's pretty close to him as Larco in to punt it away. Back deep for Lindenwood. It's Kobe Smith. Great punt by Larco. Drives back inside the forty. But Smith makes a couple of moves, gets out to the 43 before being wrangled around by a couple of UT Martin gunners. On the tackle there look to be Brock Powers, a long snapper from Cornersville, Tennessee. Powers on the south for the Skyhawks. Cornersville's won a state championship in single A. Lake County beat them several years back for their uh, second or third state championship in school history. Of course, we've got a flag here. Had a little extracurriculars after. They're going to kind of powwow and see who is what. Uh, I, I don't know who. I'm not going to say names, but I did see a little hand in a face mask and, and an after extra play, push. Here we go. Unnecessary. I'm sorry. A sports like conduct. Kicking team number 16. His first of the game. 15 yard penalty. First down. Linda That's probably the hand of the face mask. I wasn't going to mention it. If they didn't yeah. see it, I didn't see no, it. Unnecessary, unsportsmanlike. And I could hear on the referee's crowd <laughs> mic, Coach Jason Simpson. That is a very distinct voice that you can hear. Jalen Sharp, the transfer from Charlotte, whistled there for the unsportsmanlike. Linda Wood's going to take over. First down. Hattler, I am going to call you out in my trip to uh -oh. Bucky's in Texas. I ate a turkey sandwich instead of a brisket sandwich, and you did not you did not tell me how important it was. Well, I'll, I'll give you my thoughts on brisket in a oh, minute. Okay. But yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Duggar at quarterback, hands off to his tailback, Justin Williams. But, yeah, I have an aversion to eating brisket at gas stations. <laughs> now, I'll tell you this. Pizza, my, you're okay my, with. Yeah, pizza I'm okay <laughs> with. You know, sushi, just kidding. But, no, uh, my wife, when we went to Texas uh, a year or two ago, she got a barbecue, a, a brisket sandwich there, yeah, yeah. and it was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As Derek no. Carr would say, it was phenomenal. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it was – I've not forced myself to eat brisket from a gas station. But you have to tell yourself, for those of you that – Travel around the south. Bucky's is not a gas station. That's right. Bucky's is an experience. And, uh, okay. It's a great place to go. Duggar's pass out into the field side, hauled in by Jalen Bethany, 5'10, 170 pound sophomore out of St. Louis, Missouri. Gain of six on the play. And no, they are not a sponsor. So yeah. back to football. <laughs> Bucky's nuggets are some of the best foods you'll put in your mouth. Yeah. Ghost pepper jerky will light yeah. you up. Okay. <laughs> They're going to call. send you a check when they should. <laughs> they do have the cleanest restrooms in the country. Third down and four. Three minutes, 15 seconds left in this opening Ohio Valley contest for Lindenwood and UT Martin. UT Martin on cruise control right now, 56 to 19. Duggar back, looking around, trying to find somebody flush to his left. Checks it down to his running back out of the backfield. That's going to be a first down. Jalen Bethany, actually the wide receiver on the play, making the catch. So it's 24 first downs now for Lindenwood. The Skyhawks have 21. Abdullah in on the stop. Duggar to Bethany has been a nice combination for Lindenwood here in the final half of the fourth quarter. Lindenwood trying to punch another one in. Down 37 points to the Skyhawks. Duggar rolls to his right, looking for Bethany again, checks it down. It's another one of these full tight end stables. This time, second catch of the night will be Abe Har. This for Lindenwood, their first ever Ohio Valley Conference game. Their first OVC home game comes up a week from today, hosting SEMO. That's at 1 o'clock. Of course, picked up their first Division One win over Houston Baptist, who UT Martin will play later in the season. Duggar receives a snap, looks back, floats it to the back pylon. Getting coverage, UT Martin, flag coming out. Yeah. Unfortunately, UT Martin defender unable to get his head turned back around. Pass interference. Defense. Automatic. First down. 
I believe that was Kyler Pearson in coverage. Cole Duggar looked like he put that one right there on the money. He only had five pass attempts coming into this game tonight, but he's shown some mobility, some accuracy. So Pearson whistled for the pass interference will bring up another first and goal for Lindenwood inside the 10. Ball will be spotted at the six. Single receivers to both sides of the formation. Ball on the near hash. Duggar again tries to find his receiver back pylon incomplete. The pass is incomplete. Trying to find Bethany once again. These two sophomores trying to hook up early and often create some type of chemistry for the foreseeable future. Yep. So you've got to believe Duggar will be tabbed as a starter in the spring. And Coach Stuggar. Yeah, you have a 6'4 wide receiver on there. Not a not a bad option. Just try to throw it up and see if he can't make a play for you. That's not good. You may have heard the PA announcer mention the weather alert. Uh oh, I did and not. And we've had a lightning strike 14 miles away. Duggar once again throws it. This time, touchdown, Duggar Lindenwood. Is that 19? D Duggar's been going after that side of the field since he came into the contest. You see on the replay, nice little throw hauled in by Jeff Caldwell, six foot four, 190 pound freshman from Louisville, Kentucky. Okay, another youngster. So another youngster for Lindenwood. Gets them back on the scoreboard. Siebert on to attempt the extra point with a minute 43 to go. Kick is up, and the kick is good. Point is 56-26, 30-point lead by UT Martin with a minute 43 to go. And, again, that we've had a lightning strike 14 miles away. I'm trying to see. That's probably southwest of us, but with just a minute 48 remaining, we'll try to – to get this one in the book, and that is the case. South. Are you saying you don't want to have a delay and do some? No. <laughs> of course, Bart John, Ballou, John can talk yeah. about brisket, and I can talk yeah. about bologna and mustard. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody will bring out some spam. <laughs> Our longest, we've had a lot. Well, we had a nice Murray State delay not too long ago because of lightning. Yeah. We had a Memphis delay a few years ago that was beneficial. Uh, Tennessee Tech. Yeah. A uh, two-hour one here yeah. several years That's ago. That's right. Let's don't. Let's just don't. I would imagine at this point in time they would probably just put this one in the books. I think that has to be monitored by Bart Blue, head athletic trainer for UT Martin, and Kirk McGuffin, athletic director. Bart Blue, of course, assistant athletic director to him. Happy birthday to Ryan Minley, associate yeah. athletic director. Yeah. yeah. What? Yeah. Birthday? Well, then I got to throw on my mom out there. Then Judy Suter, happy birthday yeah. yesterday. Oh, Come on, if we're doing right. that. Yeah. UT Martin with their hands team. In expecting an onside kick. Devontae Tanksley, the only person back for UT Martin in the event that Siebert tries to kick it deep. A minute 43 to go. Lindenwood trying to get something going, and he kicks it away. Tanksley runs back. Ball goes into the end zone, and this will be a touchback for UT Martin. Ball will come out to the 25, and UT Martin ought to put the final nail in the coffin for their eighth consecutive home win spanning the last three seasons. So crowd can, starts to file out of Hardy Graham Stadium. And I was uh, having a conversation beforehand with some of the assistant coaches um, for Lindenwood, most notably, Anthony Jones, he's a running backs coach. This is his first season uh, at Lindenwood. Played at Jacksonville State as a wide receiver. And he said, I've got a new press box. Oh, yeah, <laughs> he noticed. Yes, we yeah. do. Yeah. Of course, he was at Jacksonville State in 07 and 08. So, he didn't get – he remembers the houseboat that used to sit atop the bleachers oh, yeah. here at UT Martin. When the wind would blow, we, we would blow with it a little That's bit, just sway right back there. and forth. And they got a new press box not too long ago in Jacksonville State with the upgrade of their stadium. Bring up second and four. Jordan Castleberry on the carry for UT Martin. A gain you, of six. You really look at the stadium improvements, the Bob Carroll building, and how much progress we've made since uh, the early 2000s. Hand off to Castleberry once again. Simmons Bank first down, gain of five, six, eight on the play. Castleberry 
Castleberry again on the carry. For the Last time, first UT first Martin. Down. Had a 100-yard receiving game was Colton Dow. UT Martin tonight does not have a 100-yard receiver. Six different receivers have caught passes for the Skyhawks. Ten different receivers Brown for Lindenwood is Brown. Sprints out. It's really been more about the ground game for UT Eight. Martin as they went over 300 yards. That run right there pushes them over 312 yards. Yeah, Colton Dow probably not happy. Like, come on, get well, more involved. He came into yeah, this one yeah. averaging 101 yards receiving. He, you know, led, at least led, I'm not sure what these stats will do, but led the OVC and, and yardage was, was number 11 in the nation at that 101 yards a game. And off to Castleberry, pops across the 50, 40, 30, down to the 29-yard lines. Castleberry picks up 30 on the play. Well, and that's going to be the most lopsided stat is the Skyhawks with 350 rushing yards or 340 compared to Lindenwood's 63. Yeah. Oh. Well, I, I think it is safe to say is Lindenwood, despite the score tonight, has made an impression that the move to the Ohio Valley Conference is something that they will be able to handle in the near future. Agreed. And that's going to do it. UT Martin picks up the first Ohio Valley Conference win of the season, 56-26. And that does it here from Graham Stadium on ESPN. For John Hatler and Eddie Suter, I'm Chris Brinkley saying so long from Graham Stadium in Martin, Tennessee, where the UT Martin Skyhawks get the win over Lindenwood, 56-26. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.